Hello everyone and welcome to Memorial Stadium in Frisco, Texas as the Wakeland Wolverines and the Sulphur Springs Wildcats will begin this 2018 football season on the turf field here in Frisco. It's 92 degrees, feels like 96 degrees outside right now as we uh, prepare for this ball game here in Frisco tonight. A uh, colorful game with um, these two teams. Wildcats will be in white uniforms, Wakeland in uh, blue and orange uniforms. Uh, both of the uh, uh, cheer squads and drill teams on the field as they prepare for the start of the game, getting ready for the teams to go through their run through. And as we begin this first game of the season, of course, for the Wildcats, only a couple of games will be played uh, in pre-district, and then we go into uh, our district. We'll be following some of our district team scores this evening. North Forney already playing against Colleyville tonight. They're in the fourth quarter. There's no score in their game. Hmm. And uh, then uh, Forney playing Berkner. Roy City taking on Centennial. Greenville playing W.T. White. Lindale and Kaufman playing tonight. Of course, Kaufman, the team in our district. Terrell and Hallsville playing this evening. And Innocent walks a hatchie in a big game. Corsicana playing uh, uh, Centennial, it says. So uh, we shall see um, uh, how that turns out. They are the Centennial Spartans as opposed to the Centennial Titans. So I guess it's a different uh, group from somewhere. But anyway, we're looking at these uh, particular games as we follow the action here tonight. Don, you've got some starting lineups. And so uh, for uh, the Wildcats and for Wakeland, let's take a look at those lineups. Those lineups. Don Julian will be doing your play by play tonight. Doug Haston videotaping the game for a replay on Channel 18. Butch Burney with us here uh, this evening. He'll be uh, doing a story for us on KSSDRadio.com. And also, Butch and I'll be talking at halftime about the statistics of the first half of play. I'm Jim Rogers. We're glad that you're with us. Don, let's look at those starting lineups. All right, we'll start with the uh, Frisco Wakeland quarterback. He's Dylan Liable. And uh, his uh, main running back, uh, will be Cade Starnes, and if they use a fullback, uh, he, it'll be Chance uh, Delashaw, and uh, the wide receivers uh, for uh, Wakeland are uh, Kevin Reichel, and also uh, Garrett Field. Uh, slot re uh, receiver is Sam uh, Chatham, and if uh, they use a tight end, uh, uh, sometimes in their formation, and that will be Jake Marshall. Their left tackle, a real good one, Alex Lara. A left guard is uh, Jensen Spillum. The center is uh, Tej Karuvia. The right guard is Michael Callahan, and the right tackle is uh, Austin Hurley. So the, the offense for the Frisco Wakeland Wolverines. You may just call them the Wolverines from time to time. Now let's look at the defense uh, for the Wildcats with their 3-4 uh, base. The nose tackle is Ignacio Nacho Guerrero. Uh, the uh, tackles are Jose Rodriguez and Evan Rushing. The inside linebackers are Bryce McQueen and Daniel Marino. And the outside linebackers are D.Q. Pitts and also Kylan Wade. Uh, cornerbacks are Damian Day-Day Dugan and also uh, Andy Eddins. And the safeties are Landry Tyson and also Austin Dodd. So those are the starters uh, for the Wildcats on defense. The Frisco Wakeland defense, again, it is also a 3-4. And uh, their uh, nose tackle is David uh, Schlager. Uh, their uh, defensive ends are Ethan and Zualda and also Diavante Massey. Uh, the outside linebackers are real good one, uh, Adam White, and also uh, Cannon uh, Roeder. The inside linebackers, uh, another good one, Brock Deaton, and also Jacob uh, Veris. The cornerbacks are Jaden Page and also uh, Sam Chatham. And uh, the uh, and strong safety is uh, Garrett Cats. Field. And uh, the uh, strong safety is Josh Darns. Boy, that guy started announcing there in my ears, and I thought James Terry was talking to me. Uh, but that was a PA announcer here in the station, or at the stadium, excuse me. And now let's uh, give you the offense for the Wildcats. Let's go across the line. Left tackle, Philip Rader. Left guard is Giovanni Pisano. The center, Ethan Rogers. The right guard is Jacob Janitis. And the right tackle, Charlie Maddox. 
quarterback is uh, DeCorian Young. And uh, starting at the running back position, a sophomore, Caden Davis. Uh, slot receivers are Austin Dodd and Chase Haney. And wide receivers are Landry Tyson and also uh, Jace Thompson. So, Jimmy, those are the starting lineups for both teams. And we will be bringing you some sound as it's made available to us. We are kind of at the mercy, mercy of uh, Memorial Stadium here. They do not have any way of getting uh, outside sound uh, into the box other than through a uh, uh, cord that they have con connected for us. We're probably going to be able to pick up the referees, uh, some of the uh, mm -hmm. uh, announcing that has been made. And they, uh, they've told me that at halftime we will be able to hear the band, so we will hope okay. for that. We're not going to have a lot of crowd noise. Uh, the, Your the Wakeland Wolverines coming out onto the field at this moment in time. The Wildcats are already out on the field. They came, they began marching out until they got to about the 10-yard line for the Wildcats. They marched out to about the 10-yard line, and then they began running uh, the full length of the field. They are on the sideline on the far side, obviously, as uh, we get ready to begin this game. Wildcats in blue uniforms, uh, excuse me, white uniforms, blue numbers, blue helmets. Wakeland in uh, kind of an Auburn look here with their... Uh, um, uniforms blue and orange uh, as they begin the game. Wildcats came out with the Wildcat flag. Wakeland came out with an American flag and a school flag as well. Captains meeting in the middle of the uh, field at this moment for the Wildcats. Number one, Austin Dodd. Number 16, Landry Tyson. Uh, number 92, uh, who is Jose Rodriguez. And uh, I think there's one 70, more. Ethan Rogers. 70, uh, Ethan Rogers is the other uh, no relation, by the way. Uh, yeah, not not related. Um, I'm related uh, to my mom and to my wife in Hopkins County, and that is it. So um, we look at this group of Wildcats as they're prepared for the game. A lot of enthusiasm on this team as they come into this game tonight. Of course, playing in that uh, scrimmage against uh, Liberty Ilo. Um, let's see if we pick up the referee here on the flip. They did not turn it on. Wildcats won the toss and have determined to defer. Uh, Wakeland discussing it among themselves now. Uh, they will. Uh, so Wakeland will defend the. Uh, that's going to be the west goal. Wildcats uh, the east goal. And uh, Wakeland will be. Looks like very light wind tonight, Jimmy, as yeah. far as that goes which way you'd want to go. The captains, by the way, for uh, Wakeland's Wolverines, uh, Adam White, also Brock Deaton. Uh, we also have uh, Reed Morris and also Alex Laura. And as the teams get ready to come onto the field, we have several sponsors for Wildcat play-by-play -play football this evening. James, if you would, play that sponsors list for us. And we're back at Memorial Stadium. Wakeland Wolverines, Silver Springs Wildcats here this evening as we get ready for the two teams to come onto the field after the national anthem. Let's see if we can pick that up. I don't think we're going to be able to. Everybody's standing. So. Yes, everyone is standing, and we'll see if we get any sound from that. They've not begun to play yet. On behalf of the students and staff of the Frisco Independent School District, I would like to welcome you to tonight's game between Wakeland High School and Sulphur Springs High School. Interscholastic competition is a long-standing tradition in Texas high school. It provides high school students the ability to work collaboratively as part of a team. The opportunity to set... And we don't have a very good sound through their new system that they've installed here. They were telling us that they've installed a new system and that they were hoping that we would have uh, a good sound through it, but uh, it looks like we're going to be a little light on that sound at this particular point in time. Anyway. Band even on stand down there, they were ready to play instruments up, and yeah. after kind of a lengthy uh, preamble from the press box, uh, the band director told his uh, musicians to relax yeah, at they're, ease. <laughs> and they'll be, they'll be playing in just a moment. We're not going to be able to uh, pick up what they play, I am so afraid. Uh, and we regret that uh, as uh, we begin this uh, event this evening. Yeah, we're pretty much sealed off for sound. It's uh, like watching a silent movie in here, so we hope uh, we can get into some enthusiasm for this game without uh, uh, all the ruffles and flourishes of the sounds from the stands. Now instruments are up. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this.
And I'm afraid all you're hearing is a hum. We're not going to continue to put you to that misery. Uh, we will uh, just simply say that they are playing through the national anthem at this moment in time, and we apologize that we cannot get the sound here. We'll have it when we're at home at Prim Stadium next week, uh, and you'll be able to, uh, to hear the national anthem. A great deal of respect being given by both of these football teams to the anthem as they stand in place. Uh, Wildcats with their hands over their heart, the uh, Wolverines with their hand on the shoulder of the player in front of them. Uh, a very good uh, uh, tradition for both of these teams as they um, honor the nation uh, and the American flag. The American flag and Texas flag both at half mast here this evening, or half, half uh, staff, depending on whether you're Navy or Army. And uh, uh, that, uh, of course, no ships. Uh, that because of Senator uh, John McCain passing and uh, we certainly honor uh, a great American who uh, has served the country quite well as a senator and as a Navy pilot. The drill teams marching off the field as we get ready for the game this evening and of course remember this is a first game for everyone, first game for the Wildcats, coaching staffs, the uh, referees and for your announcers this evening. So we're going to do our best to uh, bring you uh, the ball game as, uh, as it happens and, of course, give you as much information as we possibly can as this game goes on. There have been a few rule changes. We'll take note of those as they happen throughout the game. Wildcats getting ready to kick off. They are going to their place, uh, uh, the tee in hand uh, for the Wildcats, uh, kicking off for the Wildcats number 26. That's um, Brandon Zavala, I believe. Uh, who, uh, that is correct. Yes, Brandon Zavala taking the ball and he's going to be putting the tee down and as we get ready to begin this game let me just simply say to you that uh, bringing you this kickoff this is the Jay Hodge Chevrolet Wildcat kickoff Jay Hodge Chevrolet located on Wildcat Way in Sulphur Springs Don Thank you very much, Jimmy, and uh, as you mentioned, Brandon Zavala, he was not able to kick uh, during the scrimmage, uh, had some uh, muscle uh, pull issues, I believe, but obviously has made a rapid recovery and uh, is now the starting kicker for the Wildcats, and back deep to receive, we have Cade Starnes and also Charlie Bur Burkhart uh, for the uh, Wakeland Wolverines. Here's the approach and the kick by Zavala, and he uh, sends it down around the 20-yard line, taken by Wakeland across the 20, running uh, to the middle of the field across the 25. Big uh, contact made it around the 28-yard line, and that's where uh, Wakeland will start. Uh, first down and 10 from uh, the 28-yard line as that kickoff was returned that time by Cade Starnes, who we understand will be their starting uh, halfback. And good coverage by the Wildcats as they were able to uh, get downfield quickly and uh, swarm to the ball to make that tackle. Um, and uh, if he'd called a fair catch, they'd have had it at the 25. He only gained about three yards beyond that point. So we'll see how things go. And here come uh, the Wolverines, and they're back in the shotgun. Dylan Liable is their quarterback, big, tall, six foot five fellow back there in the shotgun. Has uh, one receiver right, two to the left, and uh, Liable looking down the field. He's going to throw long toward his favorite target. Wildcats have a good shot, and, and they did. do intercept the pass down around the 30-yard uh, line. I believe that was Austin Dodd on yes. the interception at the 30-yard line, and it really Dodd had a much better look than Kevin Reichel, the intended receiver, had good uh, double coverage on him, Jimmy. He did, and I'm sure Dodd had the sun in his eyes as he saw that ball coming down, but great concentration to do that, showing why he's wearing those captain stripes here in this game tonight. Uh, an excellent work by Dodd, and he had uh, uh, some assists back there. Also, uh, great work. Wildcats ready to go. All right, uh, their left-handed quarterback, DeCorian Young, uh, is back there in the shotgun. And uh, Young uh, awaiting the snap here from the 30-yard line. Uh, Young back to pass. He'll throw a screen. It's caught out across the 30 to the 35, across the 40, and uh, across the 40 down to around the 36-yard uh, line, completed to the starting uh, running back for the Wildcats, and that is Caden Davis, uh, the young sophomore. Uh, if you were at the scrimmage, you saw him go 36 yards for a touchdown. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down, and here we go. Boy, that uh, didn't take long, and we're up around the 43-yard line back to Young, and he hands off, and this is Davis slicing through, and he's down uh, within a yard or two of another first down. Actually, they gave him a pretty it. good mark, and it is a first down. So, so it's at the 47-yard uh, line uh, in uh, Wakeland Territory. Second, Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down. 
moving the ball as easily as a Jeep going through. Oh, the now train. watch out. <laughs> yeah, I, I got one. I like them. DeCorian Young takes the snap and uh, hands off to Davis again, breaking a tackle across the 45, and uh, he's going to get down to about the 43-yard line at that time. That's a gain of four on the play. It'll be second down and six uh, from the uh, 43 in Wakeland territory. Third play from line of scrimmage and uh, first one that didn't develop a first down. So uh, offensive coordinator Matt Young liking uh, what he's seeing so far, but uh, the, the key is to that consistency all the way down the field. It's not the way you start sometime, but, but uh, making it all the way down there. We see Jermond uh, Bryant Amos is in there as a B-back uh, to the left and up uh, behind the line of scrimmage. A fake to the running back down the field, incomplete, through behind Austin Dodd, who was coming from the right side from the slot uh, over the middle of the field, but thrown back behind Austin. So it'll be third down and six now for the Wildcats at uh, the 43-yard line in uh, Wolverines territory. And uh, Dodge is moving through there very quickly uh, and as that ball goes behind him. Naked backfield this time for DeCorey and Young. Three receivers out to the right and two to the left. So got to watch... Uh, uh, some real blitzing on these kind of plays, and now he's going to take it down and run across the 40 and across the 35 down to the 30. Looks like he stepped out of bounds at the 27-yard line, a first and 10 for the Wildcats. And, I mean, DeCorian saw the big rush coming, and he took off uh, like a scalded cat that time all the way down to the 27-yard uh, line. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down, and the Wildcats continue to move the ball readily. And uh, also uh, Colton Allen is now in as a running back for the Wildcats. The uh, senior for the Wildcats that had over 700 yards rushing last year. Corian Young uh, takes a snap. He'll turn and hand off uh, Colton Allen across the 25. And Allen down to around the 22-yard line. That's a gain of five on the play. And it will be second down and five now for the Wildcats at the Wolverines 22-yard line. Interesting to watch these Wildcats move this ball so quickly downfield. They're doing a great job mixing up these plays. One of the emphasis this year, too, has been faster uh, uh, snaps, uh, increase the pace. The so Wildcats trying to do that here on their first drive. Here's a snap back and handoff Colton Allen, and he's hit right at the 22, kind of wrapped up right there. So we'll say third down. Let's give him a yard on the play. Let's say third and four from the 21-yard line for the Wildcats. Big third down play here. Nine minutes, 25 seconds left to go in the first quarter. There is no score as the Wildcats intercepted the first pass of the game and now have moved the ball readily downfield. I can tell you've been talking to Kerry Craig. Uh, he's, uh, he likes those scores in the football games. That'll keep you from getting a text, by the way. He's not alone. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. It's very important, and we recognize that. We laugh about it, but we know uh, we take it seriously. DeCorey and Young now with two receivers out to the right, one to the left. He's got his B back in there and is running back to his right. He looks down the field to pass. Now he's going to scramble out of there across the 20 to 15 to the 10, and he will score! Touchdown, Wildcats! And Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says way to go, Wildcats, as DeCorian Young took that one, saw a nice hole, and just simply made his way through that uh, line of scrimmage and with speed found the end zone. That was a 70-yard drive, uh, Jimmy, that started uh, Wildcats back at their own 30-yard line. And they're lining up. I guess this is the swinging gate formation. It looks just like a two-point play here. And the Wildcats are deciding to go for two. Young throws a pass out. It is caught. And the receiver yeah. into the end zone for, a, for the two-point uh, conversion. And that went to Damian Dayday Dugan on the catch. And he took it into the end zone. And the Wildcats are up eight to nothing. And uh, 8.46 left uh, here in the first quarter. Wildcats 8 and Wakeland 0. We'll take a break. Back in a moment. Well, DeCorian Young runs it into the end zone. Dam Damian Dugan takes a pass into the end zone for the two points. After, it's 8 for the Wildcats. 0 for Wakeland with 8.46 left to go here in this first quarter. What an exciting start for the game for the Wildcats, Don. Kickoff uh, sorry, coming up here. Uh, Brandon Zavala will kick it for the Wildcats and same two deep guys that we saw a while ago and they're coming up uh, much closer to the 20-yard line this time. Let's see how Coach Owens takes uh, or plays this as Zavala approaches and he will kick deep on these guys. He kicks it over their head. It hits at the three and goes into the end zone. How about that, Brandon Zavala? Wow. wow. 
All the way. Kickoff all the way to the end zone. Uh, Coach Owens has already said many times that, uh, well, we just don't have the kicker with a leg to put it in the end zone. He just did. <laughs> we do Sorry now. about that, Coach, but I know uh, you're beaming with pride and very happy that that happened. Coach Owens, by the way, uh, coaches up those uh, guys on, on the kickoff teams. and So he, he likes to see stuff like that, especially the kickers. He wants them to get that pooch kick and all that down. So first down and uh, 25, or from the 25-yard line, first down and 10 for the uh, Wolverines. And Liable takes the snap, and here's a running play. Uh, a running back is uh, forward for about three or four yards as they hand off that time went to uh, Cade Starnes, and he will gain three. And it'll be uh, second down and seven from the 28-yard uh, line, uh, Wakeland in their own end of the field. Well, the Wildcats are not the only ones in the on the board in the district. Uh, Ennis hasn't got on the board, but Waxahachie has 7-0. to zero. Wow, that's a huge rivalry, by the way, for folks in that, that area. Here's another run uh, by the running back, and uh, he uh, Starnes will gain up to the 30-yard line that time. But good moving by the uh, Wildcat defense. They just came right in and uh, made a nice stop on that play. Third uh, down and five at the 30-yard uh, line for uh, the Wakeland Wolverines, and then another big play for this Wildcat defense now as uh, they forced a turnover the first time up. Liable back in the shotgun will take the snap. He's got time to throw, slings it out. Oh, fired it over the uh, head of the intended receiver is Chance uh, Delashaw back there coming out of the backfield. And you wonder what kind of butterflies, Jimmy, this quarterback may have. He is was a JV quarterback last year, played with a JV the entire season. And I mentioned that to Coach Owens, and Coach Owens uh, told me, well, he looked very, very good uh, in their scrimmage against West Mesquite last Friday that the Wildcats coaches saw. But uh, he looks like he's got a few butterflies, the interception, and then that, that ball yeah. was not well thrown. Yeah, here comes the punt from Wakeland to the Wildcats, and I'm not sure who is back there. I, Trace Link will be the punter for a Wakeland that might be Austin Dodd it is back not. there. It is. He, he fumbled the punt. He did fumble it Got and it uh, kicked well, it uh, high under the air. And uh, the Wildcats are getting away from it. Takes a little bit of a Wakeland roll. Went up uh, out of bounds at around the 43-yard line. So a, a very a short kick of uh, about 13 yards after the bad snap. I was uh, busy trying to identify Austin Dodd uh, when that snap came. So we're still in uh, first game form, too as uh, we uh, try to iron things out here. But the Wildcats with very, very uh, uh, good uh, field position at the Wakeland 43-yard uh, line. Yeah, the snap went off to his uh, right side. He just couldn't handle it. DeCorian Young has uh, trip receivers out to the right, single receiver to the left. Wildcats seeing if they can put another scoring drive together. Snap a little high, pull down. Here's the throw. It's caught out there by Dodd. He goes around a couple of players. He's running from side to side, but picked up some blockers across the 40. And Dodd uh, continuing to run. They still, yeah. they finally uh, will wrestle him to the ground, but he'll get some good forward progress all the way up to the 38-yard line. That's a after all that running That's around, about how far he a five-yard <laughs> gain. Yeah, he, he went about 50 yards from uh, way on the right side all the way to the left, but uh, gain five on the play. At least it's positive yardage. Second down and five for the Wildcats. They're at the uh, Wakeland 38-yard line for DeCorey and Young. Great effort by Dodd. Yes, it was. And he picked up some great blocking as he uh, went from sideline to sideline. And Young looking down the field and now will throw Oops. incomplete. Tried to uh, get it over there to uh, Caden Davis out of the backfield. It'll be third down and five for the Wildcats at the Wakeland 38-yard uh, line. So now a big play on uh, for the uh, Wakeland defense and also for that Wildcats offense. 6.45 left to go in the first quarter. Score 8 for the Wildcats, 0 for Wakeland. And once again, a backfield with no help. Uh, uh, the uh, Napoleon Solo uh, uh, formation. There's nobody back there with uh, DeCorian Young. Three to the right and two to the left. Young looking. He will throw this one down the field incomplete. He uh, threw uh, in the uh, direction of uh, Jace Thompson yeah, just down off the, the field and just off his hands. A little bit of a high throw. And let's see what the Wildcats choose to do on fourth down and five here from uh, the 38-yard line. Great job by that offensive line. Uh, you were talking about him being by himself back there. It's the second play that they've done that, and the line's done a great job protecting the quarterback. 
And uh, it's a punt uh, for the Wildcats as they have Jermon Bryant Amos, who uh, averaged 38 yards a kick last year. He was the strong-legged guy. Uh, the good guy inside the 20 was Angel Tavera last year, but this guy was the banger. And uh, here is uh, Bryant Amos's kick, and he kicks away from the uh, receivers, hit around the five-yard line and went out of it's bounds. Out. And they will mark it at the seven. Is nice. there a flag, Jimmy, you said? No, no, I was looking where, he, where it went out. It oh, okay, seven-yard line was where it went out. First down and ten, uh, Wakeland pinned back and uh, – uh, Coach uh, Owens uh, decided not to gamble at the 38-yard line on fourth and five, and uh, Bryant Amos uh, made him look good on that with a punt uh, down yep. to the seven-yard line. You know, the Wildcats have done a great job protecting field position here this evening. Uh, they took the ball uh, at the 43 on that to punt that they received, and now holding them at the seven here as they begin. We'll see how the defense reacts to this. First down and 10 from the seven-yard line for the Wolverines. And uh, Libel, the quarterback, uh, he's had a couple of forgettable uh, first couple of drives for the Wolverines. Takes the snap, a handoff running back right up the middle. Tough going in there, a gain of uh, just a, a couple of yards uh, for the uh, Wolverines. Yeah, it's number 21, I believe. Okay, the same running back that uh, they've used every time. And uh, uh, we expected Cade Starnes to get a heavy load, and so that's not a big surprise. Second down and eight now from the uh, nine-yard line for the Wolverines. And again, they're back in the shotgun. They have a single receiver out to the left. I think that's Rachel, their favorite target out there. And uh, Libel will take the snap. He's rolling to the right, looking at the other side of the field. Completes the pass of behind the secondary. Here he goes across the 30 to the 40, and he will. He may score. He's across the 30, and that uh, receiver will score all the way coast to coast as Garrett Field uh, caught the ball, broke a tackle, and then just went uh, down the field. That was a 91-yard touchdown pass. Oh, my. Uh, giving up the big play for the Wildcats. Nice speed for that young man, uh, Field, as he took off with the ball. Uh, tough one for the Wildcats. A little bit out of position on some of the guys back in the secondary, and I think that made a big difference in this. It's 8-6 to six now, Wildcats lead Wakeland, 5:44. And uh, kick uh, will be Trey Slink, uh, a big fellow. Where's that 54? He looks like he'd probably be a lineman, uh, but he's also the kicker. As Wakeland tries to get within one here. The ball is down. The kick on the way. And the kick is good. So a 544 left here in the first quarter. New score here from Frisco Memorial Stadium. Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 8. And Frisco Wakeland's uh, Wolverine 7. Let's take a break. And we'll be back in a moment. Well, Wakeland scores and gets the extra point, but the Wildcats still have a one-point lead. It's 8-7, to seven, Sulphur Springs over Wakeland at 5.44 left to go here in this first quarter of play. And as we said, some other teams playing. Kaufman leading Lindale 7-0, to zero, and uh, Greenville leaving, leading W.T. White 7-0 to zero as well. All right, and uh, now kicking off, there's a new kicker for Wakeland on the kickoffs, and that's Tanner Cragen. And back for the Wildcats, Andy Eddins and also um, Colton Allen. Eddins uh, closer to us, and then Allen on the far side, and the kick is on the way, and it's coming down toward Eddins. He'll take it at the 13. Oops. Oh, he left the ball behind. He goes back and picks it up at the 11-yard line, and he is hit by Wolverines and will be snowed under. Uh, they will mark him forward progress up to the 11-yard line. So first down and 10 for the Wildcats uh, at uh, their own 11-yard line. Well, tough break for the Wildcats as that uh, ball came in and just uh, wasn't able to take it with him. He was he had some good blocking and some good speed. All we'll right, see what Wildcats happens. first down and 10 from their own 11. Uh, this is by far the worst field position they've had as they started out at their own 30, and that last drive started at the 43 in Wakeland territory. There's a snap back and a handoff and a running back uh, – uh, across the uh, 25 uh, to the 26-yard uh, line, Colton Allen on the carry. And Allen uh, will pick up uh, five yards. Make uh, I, 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 The yard line should be the 16, so it's uh, second down and five. The Wildcats at their own 16-yard line. And uh, once again, DeCorian Young, uh, the quarterback for the Wildcats, will take the snap. He turns, hands off. Uh, Colton Allen hits up in there and finds the going uh, very tough at the, 
Oh, and the ball uh, came loose. Uh, came they loose came, and picked up by Wakeland, and Wakeland has run the ball back inside the 10 yard line. So uh, a big uh, loss of possession for the Wildcats. And uh, Wakeland celebrating as they came out as uh, they just picked up a uh, loose ball and returned it inside the 10 to the 8 yard line. So Frisco Wakeland first down and goal to go from the uh, eight yard line. And Colton Allen going off the field, uh, kind of holding a wrist like he may have been injured a bit on that play. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. So first down and goal from the eight yard line. And boy, the, the Wildcats uh, got off to a great start, but uh, not so great lately. We have five minutes left in the first quarter. The Wildcats are leading eight seven, but uh, knocking on the door, you can almost hear it if you listen closely enough. Frisco Wakeland. Liable, the quarterback, from uh, the shotgun. We'll take the snap, and uh, he uh, hands off uh, to uh, the running back, and uh, he will uh, uh, pick up about a yard. Uh, that was Cade Starnes again on the run, and it will be, uh, let's uh, call it uh, second down and nine from uh, about the seven-yard line. Moreno, the man who, uh, was it Moreno? Yes, Moreno, the man who got in to make that tackle. Great tackle. And uh, had a little bit of assistance there at the end. but Moreno. You know, I, I think he missed the entire season last year because of an injury, and so it's real good to see him back yeah. uh, with the Wildcats on the inside linebacker position. And now Liable back in the shotgun. Oops. And now we have the Lions, uh, Lions getting together, not the Lions. They played last night over in Commerce in a thriller. Looks like the Wildcats were off sides. And so, uh, yeah, they're turned in that direction. The Wildcats have fallen back to the goal line. And so a uh, mark off. And uh, down to around the two-yard line. Just maybe a tad inside the two. It'll be second down and goal from the two-yard line. That was another thing that hurt the Wildcats. Not only turnovers in that scrimmage, but some uh, mistakes, uh, penalties on the defense in that scrimmage that Coach Owens was not happy with. So second down and goal from uh, the two. Libel will take the snap and uh, hands off uh, to the running back. He's in the end zone and touchdown for Frisco Wakeland. And again, that was Cade Starnes. Two-yard run. Yeah, Starnes just pulled his way into the end zone and uh, did a good job. Wildcats hanging on to him, but he just too close. Yeah, I'll set up the extra point. Now, it's always interesting uh, when uh, uh, the Wildcats got that one-point lead real quick. And you wonder how much Wakeland will be chasing that point uh, all night long. They're in the lead right now, but their lead is only uh, five points. Extra point kick coming up uh, from uh, Trey Schlink, the right-footed kicker. And holding for him will be Jake Knight, a wide receiver. And the snap a little bit low, got away, and now Slink picks it up, and he is hit uh, by Dugan and other Wildcats. Helmet flies, and then a flag goes down. Yeah, that's going to. Not sure what that's all about. It's going to be against the Wildcats for that helmet coming off. They're going to they're going to get to do that one again. Personal foul. Uh, face face mask. mask. Yeah, you're right, Jimmy. That uh, took the helmet off. That's too bad. You had that guy wrapped up. Had a million guys swarming all over him. I think that's just kind of one of those first game th mistakes of enthusiasm, uh, where you're you know you're real excited about snowing the guy under and and somebody gets a, a hand in the bird cage there and and uh, now they get another shot at the uh, yeah from extra like point. After a bad snap, had uh, from from the one, they'll move uh, from the ten up to about the nine. Uh, the kickers usually like to keep it right where it is because they're used to that all the time. This will make a little bit longer snap, and uh, Wakeland will take time out. So we have a timeout on the extra point. Four minutes left here in the first quarter. It's Wakeland thirteen, the Wildcats eight. We'll be back in a moment. Well, with, with four minutes to go here in the uh, second quarter, we've got our first quarter. Sorry, we've got uh, another chance for our Wakeland to try to uh, take an extra point in. And Jimmy thinks they're going to go for two. And yeah. I'm not wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they've only got about a yard or so, and they just uh, had a nice little run to make that touchdown. It's eight for the Wildcats, thirteen for our Wakeland, and uh, we will see. But I, they they've had a couple of times where they had difficulty yeah, with a long slap. Quarterbacks long in there, snap. they're definitely going to go for two here. And uh, Liable is under center. I don't know how much he does this, usually from the shotgun. And let's see here the snap. Looked like the back started early. A handoff to the up back. He's into the end zone for the uh, two-point uh, conversion, the one-yard run on the extra point. 
and Wakeland. It didn't take them long to chase that point, did it? No. Nope. Uh, four minutes left uh, here in the uh, first quarter. And Frisco Wakeland 15 and the Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 8. And let's take a break back in a moment. And the Wildcats prepare to receive the kick from the Wakeland Wolverines. It's 15 for Wakeland, seven, uh, excuse me, eight for the Wildcats with four minutes to go here in the first quarter. And uh, Wildcats receivers are in position waiting for the ball. And uh, back there, by the way, is Aiden Walker and also uh, Colton Allen. And the kicker, as we mentioned the first time, Tanner uh, Cragen. So they use a different kicker, maybe have a strong leg, not as accurate. And uh, so Cragen is the man now. We'll do the uh, kickoff and the ball on the 40-yard line. The Wildcats receivers are back around the five. And Cragen approaches and uh, will put the foot into it. It's coming up very short. And Colton Allen will take it across the 15 to the 20. Allen to the 25, burst through to the 30, 35. Allen across the 40, across the 45-yard line. A nice kickoff return by Colton Allen uh, all the way up to the 46-yard line. Wildcats in their own end of the field. First down and 10 for the Wildcats at their own 46. Wildcats did a good job of opening up a little hole for him, and then Allen just simply poured on some speed to get through there. Nice run for Allen. As uh, Wakeland has now scored 15 straight points after the Wildcats got on the board first, so uh, a big test uh, here uh, for the Wildcats as uh, they start from the 46-yard uh, line with uh, DeCorian Young, the left-handed quarterback, will take the snap and hands off, and here's uh, Caden Davis, and Davis, oh, nice little twist there at the end. He goes across the 50 and down to the, uh, let's call it the 47-yard line, and so that is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's second down and three for the Wildcats. Had a little motion on that play that uh, kind of took the attention of the Wolverines. And a young two receivers left and right will take the snap. He's back to pass. He throws a pass. It is caught. Nice catch there by uh, Davis. And then he is tackled at the 45-yard line. He is one yard short of the first down. So it'll be third down and one for the Wildcats at the 45-yard uh, line in Frisco-Wakeland territory. Wildcats just steadily moving the ball here on this drive. I'm not real keen on the sound in this place, but I love the sight lines, and it's a beautiful uh, stadium to uh, look at from up here. DeCorey and Young uh, on a big third down in one play. We'll take the snap. He uh, hands off a running back. This is Davis. Davis trying to get that first down. I don't know if he got the forward progress. Looked like that last little move uh -huh. may have twisted him to the first down. That depends on where yes. that whistle blew. First down, down, the official says, and so nice uh, job of running because I thought uh, there about mid-run that he was going to have trouble getting where he needed to be. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep, first down. All right. At the 44-yard line in Wakeland Territory, DeCorian Young back in the shotgun. Got his B back in there and uh, is running back to his left, receiver Left and right. Oh, a high snap. He takes it down. Throws down the field. Caught by Austin Dodd across the 30, 25, 20. Dodd at the 10. And Austin Dodd into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. And great catch by Dodd. Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says way to go, Wildcats, as Austin Dodd takes that pass and just simply quickly moves into the end zone. Well, you see him fighting off that defender, too. Yeah, yeah, was he was good. keeping track of where that guy was. He was making uh, advance on him, and then finally he just broke and ran for it. And yeah. those golden shoes got him into the end zone. Setting up for two again. Yes, they are. They've got three receivers to the left and the two to the right for DeCorey and Young. The Wildcats obviously have done a lot of two-point work uh, this week. Young will throw the ball over the middle. Wide open the catch I made, I believe, there yes. by the Wildcats, as that was caught by Jermon Bryant Amos. Yes. They be back somewhere. Uh, Casey Jeter is uh, yelling, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> My guy did it. They're, they're making sure that he I notified them, but, it, but he's in there. It's 16 to 15, Wildcats lead. Let's take a break. We'll be back in a minute. Two minutes, 15 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Two minutes, 15 seconds. And it's Wildcats 16, Wakeland 15 in this tight game. Great game. Really a nice game to start the season off. Brandon Zavala again kicking off. Uh, he's got a couple of new receivers back there now for uh, Wakeland, at least one. Kevin Reichel, the good receivers back there along with Charlie Burkhart. 
And let's see how the Wildcats play it. They are here, and they'll pooch it uh, down around the 30-yard line. They catch made at the 29. Here comes a receiver back up the field, and he will cross the 40-yard line, and uh, that's uh, where he's tackled at about the 41. So Frisco Wakeland with a nice run back on that little pooch kick that time. They got an additional 10 yards or so. First down and 10 for the Wolverines at their own 41-yard line. Wildcats weren't quite as quick getting to the man with the ball as they have been in the past. And uh, this young man had a little bit of speed. They were set and ready for that little kick to the 30. And here comes the Wolverines, as, as we've noted, uh, kind of really remind you of the Auburn Tigers uh, look with that uh, blue with the orange mixed in. And Libel back uh, in the shotgun will take the snap, and the whistle will blow this one dead here. And let's see what we've got. I think we have a little offsides. Maybe wrong. Yeah, here's a preliminary indication. Oh, the illegal, illegal procedure uh, against uh, the Wolverines. That'll cost them five yards. And move the ball back to the 36-yard line. So first down and 15 for the Wolverines uh, from their own 36-yard line. We're not hearing anything out of the referees this evening. They're just no, we're signaling. Not. About the only thing I've heard has been that PA announcer just ever, yep. ever, rarely. And here's a first and 15 back to Libel. Looks to the left, throws it down the field. It is caught, and out of bounds it goes. I believe that was to Kevin Reichel. That is correct. And uh, he will get the uh, penalty yardage back, and then uh, uh, they will uh, mark it uh, right at the 41, which was uh, the original line of scrimmage, uh, maybe a foot gain from that. Yeah. So it's uh, basically a second down and nine and a half or something like that, close to 10 yards for the Wolverines. Make that, uh, yeah, second down. That's, that's correct after the penalty. And once again, Libel, the six foot five quarterback, JV quarterback last year, will take the snap. And he will hand off a running back hitting up in there and uh, gain uh, five yards at least and uh, moving uh, the ball forward. For the Wolverines is uh, number 11 on the carry there. That is Charlie Burkhart, and he moves it to the 46. Now they're five yards from the first down. Third down and five. Big play for the Wildcats defense as they really want to shut the door on Wakeland here. A minute 32 left to go in this first quarter, and the Wildcats lead 16 to 15. And is it my imagination or this first quarter is taking a long oh, time to play? Yeah, much longer than we anticipated it. And uh, here comes uh, Libel and a receiver left and two to the right for the Wolverines quarterback. He's looking uh, to the right, throws it down the field, incomplete. The Wildcats trying to run under it. They made a diving try. Did Jace Thompson pick that one off? No. The official says no, uh, not made. Jace is still holding that ball out. Of course, he may be trying to sell it there, but the ball was tipped, uh, thrown toward a receiver. It went high into the air, and Jace came up and made the dive for it, but incomplete pass, according to the officiating crew. But it will be fourth down and five, and Wakeland uh, appears to be sending the uh, punt team in there, which means we'll, he we'll see uh, Trey Schlink back yeah. there to punt. With about a minute, four seconds left to go in this first quarter. One of those referees was uh, reaching for his flag. He almost called pass inter interference, but uh, thoughts about it again. He said, decided no. Austin Dodd is back around the 15-yard line to try to receive uh, this punt. Oops. And uh, the snap it was made, matter. but uh, once again, uh, whistles uh, sound. There's a, we see a flag right down in front of us, uh, the linesman there. And that's going to go against Wakeland. Penalize him, I believe, uh, five yards. Although they're... We'll see. Yeah, they're dropping back. He's taking tiny steps. Yep. That's a five-yard penalty back to the original line of scrimmage. Talk about spending a lot of time and going nowhere. Fourth down and 10 for, uh, for the Wolverines at their own 41. Austin Dodd now has crossed the 15. He's up around the 16 in his own territory. Oh, a low snap on a couple of bounces. Wildcats coming in there, but he breaks the tackle, and the, the kicker is running, and uh, he got across the uh, line of scrimmage, but that was about it. Boy, that... Uh, that uh, got close. <laughs> that guy, yeah, he was beginning to make me pretty nervous, but finally uh, looked like uh, Landry Tyson uh, came up and uh, secured the tackle at the uh, 40... Uh, 
This call at the 43-yard uh, line, so the Wildcats uh, get a break here. Boy, this is, has a first game written all over it, doesn't it? We've seen some weird stuff. 54 seconds to go in this first quarter. Let's see what the Wildcats can do. Yeah, they're at uh, the frisco Wakeland 43-yard line. And Young uh, back in the uh, shotgun. We'll take the snap. He turns, hands off to Colton Allen, and Allen is hit right away, and uh, he's going to be thrown for a loss of one uh, back to the 44-yard line. Let's call it uh, second and 11 for the Wildcats at the Wakeland 44-yard line. So that play did not fool uh, the Wolverines, who I understand are kind of nasty characters in Wolverines. nature. Yes, they are. So second down and 11 for the 44. These guys seem nice, though. And here's a high snap, but Young uh, comes down with it. He's rolling, in, and now he throws it down the field incomplete. Tried to get it down there to Austin Dodd. It was kind of a – he had uh, Jermon Bryant Amos on a short out pattern, but threw further down the field toward uh, Dodd, but incomplete. So now the Wildcats facing third down and 11 from uh, the 44-yard line. Wise move to get rid of that ball as he did. He had some pressure uh, coming in from behind him. Yeah, that, that high snap really just uh, it just uh, kind of disrupts everything, all your timing on everything. Just 16 seconds left uh, in the first quarter. And Corey and Young on this big third down play takes the snap. He's back in the pocket. He's looking. Now he's going to scramble. Here comes Young taking off across the 40, 35. He has the first down across the 30. And that uh, is one thing uh, that uh, Marty Secord told me is he said, man, this guy can really hurt you, especially when he takes off and runs. And that's kind of the secret weapon. Uh, Coach Young, hey, he's kind of had the the uh, restraints on him during uh, uh, practice, but they, they're they off tonight, believe me, and first down and 10 for the Wildcats at the uh, Wakeland 28. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep, first down. Thank you, Jimmy. And uh, DeCorian Young, back in the shotgun, has trip receivers out to the left, single receiver to the right, and he's got a running back to his left. We'll take the snap, and he will hand off Colton Allen. He dances to the 25, Allen down to around the 23-yard line. That's uh, going to be a gain of uh, five or six yards. Let's call it five. And that's the end of the first quarter. Our score, the Sulphur Springs Wildcats 16 and Frisco Wakeland 15. So we played one here. Let's uh, come back with the start of the uh, second quarter right after this break. We're ready to begin the second quarter. The Wildcats lead 16-15 to 15 for Wakeland as these Cats have uh, certainly shown some good offensive moves here this evening. Uh, some other scores from around the district. North Forney is trailing Colleyville. Colleyville Heritage 2, North Forney 0. Oh, who hit that two-run homer? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. My goodness. And then uh, Roy City is leading Centennial 6-0. to zero. Greenville is leading W.T. White 21-6. to six. They're having a good night over in uh, uh, Dallas at W.T. T. White. Yeah. Here we go. Against those uh, Longhorns or whatever they are. First down and 10 now for the, or second down and five from the 23-yard line for Colton, or excuse me, for uh, Young, and he hands off a running back hits in there, and uh, very little uh, going that time. Uh, Number two. Uh, again, uh, Caden Davis, uh, the running back. Uh, both he and Colton Allen have seen some time. He did gain one down to the 22, and so uh, let's call it three yards Boy, that is a long three, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a long three coming up for the Wildcats from the 22-yard line. And uh, DeCorian Young has another big third down play. He may just tote the mail here, see if he can take off. He He's back to pass, big rush. It's a screen, and it's incomplete through a high pass. Uh, no, and saying. they got the interception. They're jumping up and down. So the ball was tipped and intercepted, and it was picked off by a great linebacker, Adam White, the outside linebacker, after the ball was thrown too high on the screen for the Wildcats uh, receiver and picked off. Boy, mistakes have been killing these teams tonight. Well, it's early in the season, and... Uh Wakeland coming in with a young team here. It's uh, kind of an interesting night as we start this second quarter of play. And uh, the ball is going to be marked, looks like, around the 23-yard line in Wildcats territory for, no, excuse me, I'm, I'm looking the wrong, it's on the 23 of Wakeland uh, in their own territory. So let me correct that. The Wildcats were on a pretty good drive, and here's a libel. He throws the ball down the field. It looks like it was caught. Uh, that was thrown uh, to uh, Rochelle, 
who they have big plans for this year. And that's a catch. Uh, looks like it's going to be worth about five yards. It'll be second down and five for uh, the Wolverines at their own 28-yard line. And if you had six and five in the in the office pool for the first quarter with Sulphur <laughs> Springs six, boy, those are numbers you would not choose on your own volition. Well, you better not have it in high school football anyway. Here we go. Well, I was just talking theoretically. I know. They're liable. Uh, hands off uh, running back. And this uh, is, uh, again, uh, Cade uh, Starnes. And he storms uh, forward for a first down. And uh, first down and 10 for the Wolverines up at the 33-yard line. Wildcat defense coming in pretty good. Let's see if we can identify down. some of these guys. Uh, we mentioned them on the – I've got Evan Rushing is in there at the tight end position. And uh, Nacho uh, Guerrero at the nose. And, uh, and anyway, we'll identify more as uh, we get a chance. First down and 10 from the uh, 33 in their own end of the field for the Wolverines. Liable, the big, tall quarterback, back to pass. He's looking down the field, now getting a rush as uh, rushing is rushing him there. And he runs down the field and is tackled by one of the Wildcats after a, uh, a fairly decent gain of about, looks like, four yards on the play. Uh, across uh, the 35 to the 36-yard line. So it's going to be, uh, let's call it uh, seven yards needed for the uh, first down. Uh, good uh, containment play for the Wildcats to get over there and, and uh, make that uh, tackle in kind of open territory over there. And here come the Wolverines. And once again, uh, Liable is back in the shotgun on second down and seven. They snap back to Libel. He's back in the pocket looking down the field. He'll throw it deep. He's got a receiver breaking loose, but incomplete. Uh, could not uh, make the connection. I think that was Garrett Field who caught the long one earlier. But they pass uh, incomplete. Wildcats had three players back in coverage. Let me see what numero that is. Almost look like a deuce, but he just will not cooperate. But it is a third down and seven. It is a, well, we got him there. That is a Garrett Field. Indeed, that was the player that made that 91-yard uh, touchdown play after he broke a tackle after a reception. They tried to go long that time. Here's third and seven. Uh, back to Libel, rolling to the left, looking down the field, fires an out. It is caught by Reichel. Has the first down. He's across the 45 all the way down to the 49-yard uh, line uh, in uh, Wolverine territory. And uh, that'll be more than enough for a first down for the Wolverines as uh, that receiver uh, is running that little pattern there on the out pattern and and finding a lot of space. The of Wildcats probably in some kind of a, perhaps a uh, zone defense that time, I would say. Mm -hmm. And here's uh, quarterback Liable. We'll take the snap, and he's going to hand off running back. And uh, here's Starnes straight ahead. And Starnes will be across the 45 to the 44-yard line, and that is a a seven-yard gain. It'll be a second down and three for the Wolverines at the Wildcat 44-yard line. You're listening to Wildcat football here on KSST. We do broadcast Texas Rangers as well tonight, of course, preempting the Rangers. Rangers are leading the twin 2-0 to zero in the top of the fourth inning. All right. And here come the Wolverines. They'll have they'll send two receivers out to the right. They have a running back uh, behind Libel there on this second and short. And Libel back in the shotgun will take the snap. He fakes. Oh no, he, he did a fake, but he handed off to the running back who got very little yardage. And Wildcats acting like they picked up a fumble there, as uh, the Wildcats did pick up a fumble as uh, the running back uh, for uh, Wakeland fumbled, and the Wildcats recovered at the Wakeland 45-yard line. And I'll say it again: these teams are killing themselves with mistakes tonight. They really are. We. Not sure exactly who picked up that fumble. There was a big pile of players around that Did ball. Did you get a number, Butch? Yeah, it was 59. Okay, for the Wildcats. Let's see. Let's see. 
that would be uh, DeAndre Peoples. They just added him to the roster, so that big guy coming through paying dividends early. Here's a handoff uh, or a no. fake handoff, and Young throws down the field. It is caught, and there goes uh, Dugan. Dugan up the field across the 45-yard line does pick up the first down. He was gang tackle, but he had already picked up the first by then. And uh, so it is uh, first and ten for the Wildcats across the 45 in Wakeland Territory. Great fake by du uh, by Young as he just simply tucked that ball under and began to uh, come out to the side. Then he saw his receiver and took a shot. Chase Thompson is out to the right side. The Wildcats have two receivers out to the left. For DeCorey and Young, he takes a snap and will turn and hand off to Colton Allen. Allen across the 40. Boy, they look like they're tackling that football, but uh, he, mm -hmm. Allen held on that time down to the 39. Gain of five on the play. It'll be second down and five for the Wildcats at the 39-yard uh, line uh, in Wolverine territory. 7.40 left to go in the second quarter. It is Silver Spring 16, Wakeland 15. As the teams have kind of traded turnovers here in the second quarter. And DeCorian Young has uh, uh, receivers in tandem out to the left side, one out to the right. He'll take the snap, and he will hand off Allen again right up the middle. Allen, those legs churning, and he will get uh, to about the 36-yard line. That'll be about two yards short of the first down. Let's call it uh, third down and two for the Wildcats at the Wolverine 36-yard uh, line. And, boy, this is uh, another in a series of big uh, third down plays here for the, for the teams. Certainly is, and we'll see if the Wildcats just try to run this one right down the middle or if they finesse it once again. And uh, once again, DeCorey and Young uh, from the shotgun will take the snap, and he will uh, fake, and now he's rolling to the left. Uh, Young uh, looks like he wants to run with it, picks up the first down. Young uh, will be up around the 30-yard uh, line for the – make it the – that's going to be short of the 30, maybe the 31 or 32. And first down and 10 for the Wildcats down in there after the uh, successful scramble. And I tell you what, that's going to be a real big uh, weapon this year, Jimmy, is uh, DeCorian Young with his running ability for the Wildcats. He'll be picking up some of those Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first downs just like that one. Yes, sir. Uh, DeCorian Young, the left-hander from the shotgun, and takes a snap. He's looking down the field. He throws long for the Wildcats. He's down toward Got Landry. Him. But touchdown for the Wildcats. I believe that was uh, Landry. Yes, Landry Tyson on the touchdown catch from DeCorey and Young. And that was about, uh, I believe, about uh, 31 yards on that one. Nice pass. Nice catch right there at the end zone. Good. You know, Jimmy, and I almost said that I – oh, go ahead. And Northeast Texas Farmers Club says, way to go, Wildcats. I'm sorry, Don, go ahead. No, that's okay. Brad would uh, not forgive me if <laughs> I had not done that. And uh, I was wondering why they're not trying to go downfield as so somebody yeah. like Landry Tyson. Yeah. I yeah. should have said that. I would have, I would have <laughs> came across uh, brilliant here. Yeah. Extra point uh, for the Wildcats. The ball is down and the kick on the way, and it's uh, skittering and goes uh, through the uprights. <laughs> Boy, Just that's uh, barely, barely made there. it. I think we may have figured out why well, the Wildcats have been very fond of the two-point uh, conversion. And that kick, though, was successfully made by Brandon Zavala. He's 5'7", uh, 160, and he and uh, OCL Lopez have been battling for that uh, kicking job. Uh, Lopez was the kicker during the scrimmage, but uh, Z Zapata has uh, handed the work tonight. I'm taking too long. 6'19 right. left here in the second quarter. New score now. Wildcats of Sulphur Springs, 23, Frisco Wakeland, 15. Let's take a break. Back in a moment. 6.19 left to go in the first half of play. 23 for Sulphur Springs, Wakeland 15. And we would remind you that coming up at halftime, Butch Bernie and I will be talking about the statistics of the first half of play. We'll see if we get some sound from the Wildcat band. We're kind of uh, hesitant to uh, promote that because we're afraid we may not get it. But uh, if we don't, Butch and I will just talk for 20 minutes about statistics of the first half of play. <laughs> stretch, stretch. <laughs> How fast can Doug get up to the photography deck <laughs> yeah don julian doing your play-by-play -play tonight doug haston videoing this game for replay on channel 18 butch bernie with us here in the box i'm jim rogers we're glad you have joined us on kssd and here's zavala's uh, kickoff and he approaches and this one a squib along the ground takes a big high hop taken at the 27 here's uh, wakeland across the 30 the 35 across the 40 and all the way up to the wildcats 45 yard line i bet uh, coach owens didn't design it that way uh, but another uh, fairly decent uh, return uh, for Wakeland. 
and they're going to mark it at the 44 in uh, Wakeland Territory. First down and 10. Wildcats now with that eight-point uh, advantage at 23-15 with 6-11 left here in the uh, second quarter. It'd be interesting to look into the brand names of the footballs being used because the Wakeland football is a light brown in color. The Wildcat football is a dark brown in color. you think the UIL would just step right Standard. in and regulate the heck out of that, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, you would think. Saying this is what you got to use, but I don't know. First down and 10 now for uh, Liable. And he throws the ball down the field. It's caught uh, by Reichel in the secondary. He's breaking tackles and got inside the Wildcat 35-yard line. Kind of a saving uh, tackle down there for the Wildcats by Daniel Marino from his linebacker position. First down and 10 uh, for Wakeland at the uh, Wildcats 34-yard line. And Wakeland moving that one really quick. We'll see they're, they're kind of slow coming out right now. Yeah, they, uh, I guess they were waiting for that play to, to come in, and now Liable's ready to run it. Two receivers out to the right, single receiver to the left. That's Reichel. And the snap back to Libel. He's looking his way, and he th completes it to Reichel, and he's knocked off his feet uh, by Dugan there. But uh, it'll be a first down at the 22-yard uh, line for the uh, Wolverines as well, all of a sudden uh, Reichel clicking with his quarterback Liable like uh, Coach... Uh, Secord had hoped that they would this season. Yeah, he was just one step past that first down mark when he caught that, so good planning on their part. And they're still 522, so still a lot of time for this uh, Wakeland program. Three receivers off to the right side, running back in the backfield for Reliable. And now takes the snap, a little bit of a high one. He's got to run with the ball. He breaks a tackle, goes across the 20, and then uh, knocked down at the 19-yard line. That'll be a gain of three, but they're lucky they got any positive yards after that high snap, and plus a, a busted tackle there that uh, Wildcats coaches will review that uh, and they'll have some stern words for securing tackles. So, you know, tackling's always a, a big issue. Uh, you know, that's all every week. Uh, Coach Owens will say, we've got to tackle better. Got to tackle better. It's kind of like protecting the football. It's just one of those things that you need every week. Second down and seven now from the 19 for Wakeland. Here rolling to the right is liable. He shoots the ball down the field, oh, almost goodness. intercepted by the Wildcats. Incomplete as the defender, looked like Austin Dodd there from the safety position, uh, broke the route and uh, tried to jump uh, jump the route and tried to uh, get in front of that ball. but but at least uh, didn't allow the receiver to get anywhere near to it. And right. so, big uh, third down and seven uh, with uh, Wakeland at their uh, Wildcat 19-yard line. Reminds me of playoff days when you used to talk about penetrations. Yes. Inside that 20-yard line. Boy, that used to be huge. You never hear anybody talk about penetrations in a football game anymore. And the quarterback back from the shotgun will take the snap and hands off. And uh, running back... Uh, uh, will gain very, very little, uh, maybe a yard on the play as uh, running was Cade Starnes. And it's, uh, let's see here. Third down. Third down and, uh, no, fourth down. fourth down. That's what I was yeah. waiting for that guy to flip that would help me out there. But it is uh, fourth down now and uh, need about six yards. So let's see. They may go for it. They look like, a, yes, they've got yeah. the quarterback in there. They've got Starnes. So Wakeland will uh, roll the dice here, down by eight, uh, with under four minutes to play. And now uh, the Wildcats will take a defensive timeout. 3.47 left here in the second quarter. Sulphur Springs 23 and Frisco Wakeland 15. Let's take a break with them and back in a moment. 3.47 left to go in the first half of play. Sulphur Springs 23, Wakeland 15. And big fourth down play here. Fourth down and six for the Wolverines from the Wildcats 18. And here's a fake to the running back. Quarterback back to pass. Floats it down the field. Wide oh, open wow. receiver. Touchdown for Frisco Wakeland to Reichel. He was well. wide open. They really played that well. They, uh, they just lost Rochelle in the mix of all that was going on on the field, and all of a sudden he turns up wide open, uh, just two steps out of the end zone, and they float the pass to him because there's no urgency to get it. He's too open. Yeah, and in fact, sometimes you worry about being too open and just dropping the ball yeah. when you don't have a little bit of pressure. So that requires some concentration. You don't want to pull that trick, but extra point uh, – Ready for the kick here, and this is uh, uh, Troy Schlink, 
It's a good snap and Slink on the extra point. He hammers it through there and the kick is good. Uh, no, uh, uh, not good. So uh, I, I saw a bad signal there. One official didn't signal anything and then the, I, I thought the other one had signal good but it was a not good on the kick. So well, the adventures continue in a lot of areas, including extra points. 3.40 left here in the second quarter. Wildcats of Sulphur Springs with a two-point lead now. Wildcats 23 and the Wolverines 21. Let's take a break here and we'll be back in a moment. 3.40 left to go in the first half of play. Wildcats 23, Wakeland 21. It's Wakeland sends the ball to the Wildcats on this kick. I might do an onside kick if I was Coach Secord. Here's Tanner Cragen. Let's see what he does. He's the man that will be kicking the ball, and he puts his foot into it and kicks deep. Wildcats will take it down around the 2 or 3-yard line, across the 10, across the 15, and uh, tackled at the 17-yard line. Uh, the Wildcats' uh, kick returner was Andy Eddins, and the second time we've seen him back there, and uh, he gets it up to the 18-yard line. So a very effective kick. Uh, must have been very, very high in the air. And it allowed uh, Wakeland to really do a good job of covering it. And the Wildcats now, with 3.33 left here in the second quarter, uh, have 82 yards uh, to try to maneuver to get a score. And you can tell we're getting close to halftime because uh, Principal Derek Driver is with us here in the booth. He's going to be next door to us in just a moment announcing the band. Did you know he was the daughter of Brinkley Driver, by the way? That's his uh, claim to fame. <laughs> the, Here's a handoff to Caden Davis. Yeah, what did I say? You said daughter of, but you meant dad of. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's the daughter, obviously. Uh, gain on the play, that's what I get for trying to be so cute. Uh, second down and seven uh, from the 21-yard uh, line for the Wildcats after Davis with a three-yard run. And the clock uh, just a little over three minutes here. And Wildcats, I don't see any great urgency going on right now, but I think they'll need a, probably a big play or something to kind of spur that on. We're at three minutes left yes. right now. And Corian Young will take the snap. He's back in the pocket. He throws complete to uh, Davis across the 20 to the 25. And Davis tackled at the 28-yard line. That's going to be very Still close tight. to the first down. Looks like it's going to be a wee bit short. Yep. Just and, uh, third, uh, I mean. So third down and one from the 27-yard uh, line. Really need probably about two feet for the first down. 2.27 now on the clock, but uh, they need to get the first down, or that's kind of moot, except for playing defense, perhaps. Here's a snap back to Young and handoff a big yeah. run by Davis. Davis breaking to the outside across the 35 to the 40, 45, 50. Davis across the 45 and began to lose his footing a little bit, but went all the way across the 40 and then went across the sideline there at the 37-yard line. What a very, very nice run by Caden Davis. And once again, it kind of reminded me of that scrimmage run for a touchdown. That uh, he, he has amazing abilities for the Wildcats. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep, first down for the Wildcats. That does stop the clock. Well, he went out of bounds anyway, but uh, the clock stopped at 2.10. Uh, first down and 10 for the Wildcats at uh, the Wakeland 37-yard line. And he took a pretty good little tumble into one of the equipment boxes over there. But he's all right. And here's first down and 10. Back to DeCorey and Young. Fake to the running back. Throws down the field. It is caught. And then the receiver knocked to the ground. Uh, nice catch there uh, for the Wildcats. Again, uh, Landry Tyson uh, with the catch. And uh, the ball inside the 30 to the 29. They need uh, about two yards. So it'll be second down and two from uh, the 29-yard line. The clock under two minutes and rolling now. But the Wildcats with that nice run. Uh, uh, beginning to have uh, more of a hope here. And here's a handoff. Colton Allen running. And Allen across uh, all the way down to the 20. That's a first and 10 for the Wildcats uh, on the run. And uh, the clock stopped at 137 uh, very uh, well, temporarily. Been, yeah. And Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down. All right. Rev it up. Oh. <laughs> And here we go, first down and 10, uh, and a handoff uh, up the middle again, Colton Allen, uh, he'll move down to about the 18, the clock at 120 and counting, the Wildcats now with a great sense of urgency, and they're bouncing up and uh, going right back, uh, uh, lining up as quickly as they can, it's 109 and counting, and the Wildcats second down and 8 from the 18-yard line. 
Back to DeCorian Young. He's looking, he's looking, throws deep down the field as a receiver down there. Uh, he was double covered in there front. There's a pass interference uh, flag. That Jimmy was waiting for that. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, they, they just uh, blotted him out. You saw that white uniform, and all of a sudden he disappeared yep. uh, in blue. And uh, the officials say, well, now they're talking about it. Let's make sure they don't pick that up for some reason. They're now going to have a conversation with, uh, with yeah, the uh, all-important man in the white hat. If they just shot off visual, it's not going to matter. But let's, uh, if they, what are we going to do here? We're waiting for a signal. Pass That's interference against the Wolverines, so the Wildcats will get a first down. Well, yeah. And it should uh, be somewhere around the nine-yard line, I would think. Half the distance to the goal. Well, actually, oh, it's a full 15, full 15. isn't it, Butch? Yeah. Yeah. And all the way, wow, all the way down to the three-yard line. So all of a sudden, the Wildcats like an extra point here. First down and goal from the three. 57 seconds left here in the second quarter. The Wildcats already a 23-21 lead, and they are knocking on the door. DeCorian Young. Maybe he'll call his own number here. No, he will fake and hand off to running back into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. And that was Caden Davis with... Uh, I guess his first uh, varsity touchdown uh, for the Wildcats. And Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says way to go Wildcats after that Sulphur Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down and they were able to put it into the end zone for the touchdown. Uh, cranks the lead up to eight points at 29-21. And uh, let's see, uh, uh, hopefully Zapata will get a little bit uh, more style points on than he got. But the last one, he did the job. He put it between the uprights. Uh, Jace Thompson, his holder, Back there at the 10-yard line for the Wildcats. The snap, he got it Oops. down. Here's the kick. Oh, that'll look good, uh, Zapata. Better. Its kick is good. 53 seconds uh, left uh, here in the uh, second quarter. The Wildcats now lead Wakeland by the score of 30 to 21. We'll take a break. Back in a moment. 53 seconds left to go in this first half of play. The Wildcats 30 and Wakeland 21 is uh, this game kind of going back and forth, but it's been a, a very interesting game, at least for a first game of the season. Yeah, somebody said, uh, Coach Owens, would you take 30 points in the first half? <laughs> I <laughs> Wouldn't think take would. me long to uh, say no, yes. No kidding, no kidding. My, that's a, you know, they've, it's, it's been an interesting half. Uh, uh, lots of uh, mistakes that, uh, each team making, but uh, the Wildcats uh, getting, uh, getting the job done. And, and that uh, uh, clock-beating drive, very, very important for the Wildcats. And here's Brandon Zavala, and he will kick it along the ground. Oh, it was caught a line drive at the 40 and up to about the 45. And that may be as an effective cover kick as we've seen, but it, yep. it was caught on a line drive. As Zapata kicked it right at... Uh, the uh, player from uh, the Wolverines. It was number 20, I think, wasn't it? Uh, I didn't catch uh, Jacob Viris, who uh, uh, did not catch the ball maybe. like a linebacker. 30 maybe. 30 maybe. Oh, 30. Yeah. Okay. Tate Gleason. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, wide receiver, defensive yeah. back. He would probably yeah. have the better hands. Yeah. And the Wildcats setting up for defense, waiting on the Wolverines to see what they can do in this last 47 seconds. Don't Wonder forget. Correct uh, pronunciation. I've been calling. I think I called him Zapata a couple of times. It's Zavala, Z-A-V-A-L-A. -A -A. So uh, Brandon Zavala, and I apologize well, we got uh, for a flag. missing his name. And the flag does fly even uh, before uh, Wakeland can even uh, snap the ball. And the official pointing vigorously. And uh, it's like an illegal substitution or something yeah. on that that kind of thing. Somebody. Did something wrong. So that five yards takes it from the 45 back to the 40, and here we go. So it is first down and 15 now for Wakeland at their own 40-yard line. And they have 47 seconds. And let's see what Liable is going to do here. He, he takes the ball. He looks down the field. He's going to, well, it looks like he crossed the line of scrimmage. He threw the ball out of bounds. Well, no, he was five no, yards he's, back. He's Excuse back, me. Yeah. I, I was looking at the original uh, marker for the line of scrimmage. Incomplete pass, and so it will be second down and 15 now from uh, the 40-yard line, and they have 41 seconds uh, left here in the first half. And here come the Wolverines. The Wildcats leading 30-21 to 21 here in the dying seconds of the second quarter. 
And, oh, a bad snap back, and uh, the ball's Wildcat still on the ground. It. They're still fighting for it there. wonder if the Wildcats uh, managed to get that. No, no they there's did. a blue uniform right on top, but he's not feeling very well there. No, he's going to lay there for a minute. He got crunched, uh, and uh, they're going to have to tend to an injured player. Yeah, the injury, oh, an injury timeout player here. timeout, 27 seconds left here in the second quarter. Wildcats 30 and Wakeland 21. Let's take a break with them back in a moment. There are 27 seconds left to go in this first half of play. The uh, Wolverine player up and making his way to the sideline on his own. 30 for the Wildcats, 21 for Wakeland, and uh, we'll see if Wakeland can uh, make anything happen in these last few seconds. Yeah, hobbling off the field was Charlie Burkhart. It looked like a lower leg uh, in distress, and and uh, but he, uh, as Jimmy mentioned, uh, I think he went off uh, under his own power, but he was limping vigorously. And so we'll see if uh, they can get him back uh, on the field. It's uh, third down and uh, 19. And uh, Liable back in the shotgun here with just 11 seconds left. And now the ball, another okay. bad snap. It's on the ground and Liable diving on that one. And man, uh, Live, uh, what a way to end the first half with a bad snap if you're Frisco Wakeland and you're looking up at the scoreboard and you're down by nine points and you've made uh, too many mistakes. So that'll be an interesting halftime uh, for uh, Coach Marty Secord and uh, his staff. But uh, we are at the half and the Wildcats lead uh, Frisco Wakeland by the score of 30 to 21. Well, if it's halftime, it's time for uh, Jimmy Rogers and. Uh, uh, Butch Bernie, ultimately, but I think the, we hope to get the Wildcats band uh, going here, but uh, Jimmy, will turn it over to you. And our halftime brought to you by Galleon Insurance, Silver Springs Floral, Century 21 Hometown Realtor, and Discount Wheel and Tire. We'll take a moment for these guys. We'll be back and see what we can pick up of the band. Well, we're here at Memorial Stadium in Frisco as the Wildcats lead the Wolverines 30-21 to 21 at halftime. We do regret that we're unable to get the sound of the Wildcat marching band. I know that there are many who tune in to hear them, and uh, regretfully we are uh, encased in a glass box here, um, and uh, we will have that sound for you next week. Uh, at Prim Stadium. Let me uh, uh, go over a couple of scores with you that we are some of the scores we have available in the third quarter now Colleyville Heritage still leads North Forney two to zero that uh, <laughs> obviously uh, scoring on a safety uh, and that's the only score in that game Forney High School by the way Butch Burney is with me you may hear him laughing in the background at some of these scores uh, Forney High School tra trailing Berkner 15 to 10 uh, this kind of, I think, gives us an idea of what we're going to be seeing in, as we get into the district. Royce City, 6. Centennial is 6 as well. So um, Royce City uh, holding their own against Centennial at this moment in time. Uh, Greenville leads W.T. White. They're playing here in Dallas. They're in the second quarter, and it's 35 for Greenville, 6 for W.T. White. That's with 2 minutes and 45 seconds left to go in that. Of course, Wildcats are 30 to 21 here as we get ready for the second half of play in a few minutes. Uh, Lindale tra trails Kaufman. Kaufman, the district foe for the Wildcats this year. 35-19 the score in that game. So Kaufman, a 4A team uh, that uh, has kind of moved up. Right. And they're, they're looking pretty good in, in 5A as well. Um, and then uh, uh, Terrell is playing Hallsville tonight. And uh, Terrell has yet to get on the board. It's halftime. Uh, Hallsville 27. So Hallsville uh, having a pretty good uh, go there. Waxahachie 28. Ennis 11 at halftime. And Corsicana is trailing uh, Centennial High School. And I'm not sure which Centennial that is. I may be able to know in a minute. The Spartans. Um, that game uh, 14 to 6. They, uh, Corsicana trailing there. So, uh, Butch, what do you think? Well, it's, it's hard to tell. For two reasons. Number one, it's the first game of the season, so you don't really know what teams have, um, especially some of the teams that the district teams are playing, uh, the Centennials and the, the teams like that. You don't really know what they have. And secondly, we're, we're going into this season a little bit at a handicap because Silver Springs hasn't played any of these teams before other than right. Greenville. So you go in not really knowing um, – the players from the from, from the previous years and the coaches and their style of play and all that. So, yeah, you know, it, and it's and it's uh, also hard to tell whenever some of these teams play Metroplex schools because they Metroplex schools can be just awful. 
right, right. <laughs> you know, from year to year. So, right. it, you know, and, and being the first game of the season, it's really hard to tell right now the standard of play for anybody. Right. Right, uh, that, that is it. But if we can tell the standard of play in this game because we've got some statistics to look at. So let's take a look yeah, at those. Yeah, okay. Um, and the Silver Springs leading 30 to 21 at halftime, and the statistics kind of follow along the score of the game. Silver Springs right now has 155 yards rushing on 27 carries, so doing a really good job on the ground of, of keeping the ball moving. The leading rusher so far has been Caden Davis. He's got 64 yards on seven carries he scored a touchdown uh, decorian young has 58 yards on five carries he scored a touchdown and colton allen has 33 yards on two carries and uh, you know decorian young i think has really helped the help the wildcats uh, convert third downs i think he's right. gotten three uh, third down conversions just by running the ball and that's been a big part of their offense uh, passing wise DeCorin Young has hit uh, 9 of 14 passes for 121 yards uh, thrown two touchdowns the two touchdowns have gone to Austin Dodd of 44 yards and, and he's caught two passes for a total of 49 yards and then the other touchdown pass went to Landry Tyson he's caught uh, two passes for 38 yards we also have uh, Damian Dugan's caught one pass for 11, and Caden Davis has caught uh, four passes for 23 yards. So you add all that up, 121 yards passing, 155 yards rushing. So right now, Silver Springs has 276 yards of total offense in the first half, and that's really, really good, yeah, you would is. think, for the first game of the season. Um, you know, they have uh, 13 first downs. They've, they've been able to move the ball. Really, the only thing that stopped them so far has just been the two turnovers they've, right. they've encountered. Right. And then when you look at Wakeland, uh, right now Wakeland has 32 yards total on 15 carries. Silver Springs has really shut down any type of, of their running offense. Passing-wise, uh, 7 of 13 for 166 yards. So... 198 yards of total offense for the Wolverines. 91 of that came on one pass play. And Wakeland also only has six first downs. One of those first downs came on the touchdown. Right. And then four came on the one drive where they scored the touchdown. So they've only had one other first down right. in the first half. They've taken advantage of a of a fumble Silver Springs had uh, deep in their territory. We've only had to go about eight yards for a touchdown right. and then the long pass um you know silver springs right. defensive back tried to make a play on the ball and then whenever he missed then the uh, wakeland receiver was able just to take it down the sidelines for a touchdown so really uh silver springs defense has played well you look up and they've it's 21 they've given up 21 points but there's only been one consistent drive that wakeland's had that they've been able to score a touchdown off of and the touchdown came on fourth down right so i you know the silver springs defense yeah they they still there's still some, some things that need to work out, but I think they have played better than the 21 points when you look at, at the at the scoreboard. And then the Surf Springs offense has played every bit as well as the 30 points oh, they put up. Yeah, definitely so. And I, th I think, you know, if you remove a mistake or a couple of mistakes uh, that where we lost the ball, mm -hmm. uh, and if you remove that one long play, of course, that takes us back to last year, and that was kind of all we were saying last year. If we can take some mistakes out of the game and, ta and, and take uh, the big play out of the game, yeah. you know, we, we did gr great. But, you know, we're still ahead here, and Silver Springs has been very consistent in moving the ball down the field offensively. Right. And, and you know, and I think Wakeland could say the same thing. Well, if we didn't have bad snap, if we hadn't thrown an interception, then maybe we'd be ahead. So right. I think, you know, mistakes on both sides, as you and, and Don have both pointed out in the first half, have – it exemplified a first uh, first right. game of the season type yeah. play. Both yeah. teams have, have had mistakes, but Silver Springs definitely, Jimmy, as you pointed out, has definitely looked better on offense than Wakeland has because Silver Springs, 13 first downs, almost uh, 300 yards of total offense. I mean, they have – Silver Springs has moved the ball well, and they've moved it well throwing it, and they moved it well running it. Yeah. And so I think whenever, you know, teams look at, at what they've done so far – Next week and in the coming weeks, they're going to say, you know, well, we've got to stop DeCorey and Young from mm -hmm. running. Okay, but then are you going to leave Caden Davis? Right. Let him run because he had a, a really yeah. electrifying run there late in the second half that gave Silver Springs the opportunity to score that touchdown. Right. Um, so, you know, then if you, if you try to take away DeCorey and Young's running, 
then is Landry Tyson and Austin Dodd and some of these other receivers going to be able to, to beat you right. deep? So, uh, great first half. Yeah. Uh, offensively, the Wildcats are looking good this year. I think Young is proving himself here in this first game. You know, you know, all the questions usually you know, are around what's the quarterback going to be like this year. But I think Young is answering those questions in this game tonight because he's certainly showing uh, poise and, and skill. Yeah. And I think it helped last year that he – did play some at quarterback, played some at receivers. So you get used to playing on Friday nights. You get used to the competition and the speed and all that. And then at, at quarterback last year, we saw flashes of, of what he's right. doing tonight. We saw the running ability and, and, the, and the throwing ability in, in spots last year. And I think this year, yeah, the, I think that helped him get ready for this year. Of course, seven on seven, the spring practice, all of that, I think. But right now he, he looks – comfortable and he looks athletic and uh and, and he's throwing the ball well with touch on it right i think matt young's doing a great job offensively coordinating these uh plays that we've been running because i mean we're getting a nice mix of pass and run and and a, a nice mix of of the guys being able to read what's going on and adjust to that particular read yeah and i i think it all starts with the offensive line mm-hmm. being able to protect the quarterback being able to open up holes and um you know, Don Julian has has said that the offensive line, uh, Coach Coach Owens has said that uh, has told him that the offensive line is one of the most improved right. uh, parts of the team yeah. in they, through through the practices, and I think we're seeing that where they, you know, don't want to jinx them, but you know they played really well in the first half, uh, no sacks, and whenever I look on. Um, on the statistics for negative plays, Silver Springs has um, one negative rushing play right. in the first half. So, and that's a tribute to the offensive line. They're mm-hmm. instead of being first and or second and twelve or third and nine, you know, they're they're able to move the chains, get the third and fours, the second and sixes, and things like that. Right. And that just makes it all easier. When you empty the backfield, you have nothing but your quarterback back there. You know, you you. Yeah, you, I, even a, even a coach has to have some sense of fear at that particular moment in time about you know am I leaving my man back there to you know to wide open game, but he uh, the, that offensive line has done a great job protecting him. His receivers have done a great job finding the open space. I, I think the team's doing really good. Yeah, because you're right. Whenever you've got that empty backfield with just the quarterback. The defensive coordinator is probably going to say, I'm rushing seven. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to overwhelm their offensive line and, and put pressure on the quarterback. Haven't, and they haven't overwhelmed the offensive line yet. Right. Now, they may come out with some changes in the second half, and we'll see what, what they're able to do. But right now, that offensive line has handled anything that Wakeland's thrown at them. And, uh, Jimmy, a lot of times I look doing statistics, negative plays a lot of times can determine a game. Right. And, you know, Wakeland has had, I think, five negative plays or six negative plays. Silver Springs won. That that just it, it just makes it easier. And, and and again, I think that is a tribute to the offensive line. And for Silver Springs, I think it's the defensive uh, quickness because Silver Springs doesn't have huge players on you know on defense, but they're running to the ball. And I think we've seen DQ Pitts and Marino and Rodriguez and some of those guys really pursue and make tackles um, and keep. Wakeland from getting into those second and short and third and shorts. Right. We're halfway through halftime and uh, obviously not able to uh, give you the Wildcat band this evening. They played first here uh, and uh, regretfully no uh, microphones able to pick them up out of uh, uh, outside to pipe it into us and we are, are certainly apologizing for that but uh, not our fault in this particular instance we would remind you that our halftime show brought to you by gay and insurance silver springs floral century 21 hometown discount wheel and tire we're going to take a time out we'll be back with butch uh, talking more about that first half of play we'll be right back it is halftime here at Memorial Stadium, 30-21. to 21, The Wildcats leading the Wakeland Wolverines, and a great game for the Wildcats so far. I'm talking to Butch Burney about this first half of play. And, and Butch, as we, we look at this, you know, usually at this point in time, we turn our attention to what do we expect in the second half. And, um, you know, frankly, offensively, the Wildcats just need to keep doing what they're doing, I think. Right, yeah. You know, they're going to have to see what Wakeland's going to do 
uh, to adjust in the second half, and then whatever Wakeland does, and then the Wildcats will have to make uh, an adjustment to that. But because uh, Wakeland's got to do something, you would think, um, because what? Because Silver Springs just moving the ball too easily. So don't know exactly what they're going to do, obviously, but um, they're going to make some kind of adjustments. But right now, you know, Colton Allen and and Davis are doing a good one-two punch at the running back. They're they're both staying fresh, and on a hot night like this, that's important. Um, and then you know, DeCorian Young also adding adding his running ability, and I think that's where it really starts for the Wildcats is that ability to run the ball because right. you just don't want to have to this early in the season, especially. I don't think you want to have to just load up and start throwing the ball you know, fit 20 times in a half or something like that, 25 times in a half, then um, that just lets the defense, you know, put their ears back and come at you. So I think right. as long as the Wildcats can continue to run the ball, um, keep the clock running, get these guys uh, in the flow of the game, these running backs, keep them in the flow of the game, then I think, you know, they'll continue to have success in the second half. Yeah, I do too. I, and defensively, Wakeland uh, will they, – they, they've got some, some – tools on offense yes. mm -hmm. so the wildcat defense is going to have to really stay alert and 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 stop those long plays yeah and we've seen uh both teams have the ability to have some big plays but wakeland that 91 yard uh touchdown mm -hmm. uh pass and then we've seen their other the other receiver rochelle who who has great hands and been able to get open and do some things so yeah i mean silver springs going to have to score again because you think wakeland has the ability to, to put some more points on the board um, with the with their passing game and then you know their running game they were really um, they felt really solid in the running game. Surf Springs hasn't let them get anything going and I think that's a big key that if their running back start you know if he's able to start ripping off 15 20 yard gains then that puts the defense on its heels. Yeah, you're exactly right. Now we of course as this game goes on we're going to be looking for a defensive play of the game and then we're also looking for a, the player of the game uh in our game tonight. We're going to be naming those, we're going to be featuring those uh on our website kssstradio.com and of course we're going to have a story on the game uh uh tonight. Uh, Butch is going to be uh, preparing a story on that and some statistics for you right. as well uh, that you can all find. You can find all of this on KSSDRadio.com uh, later on in the evening, at least by in the morning when you wake up, because you probably won't want to wait till we get home. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we will have those things available to you as soon as we can, and uh, certainly we'll make it an interesting time. Well, the uh, Wakeland Band seems to have uh, a, a number of... Uh, pseudo props that they're setting up now i hope uh, in seven minutes they can set them up play and, and take them down they're but going from the five yard line to the five yard line they've got to spread out <laughs> they they really do as we we talk usually also you and i have a chance to talk about uh, uh the other teams that are in the district but right now getting acquainted is 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 kind of the important thing for these other teams I think. yeah and i think you know historically you you know ennis is going to be solid you know course ken is going to be solid uh, you know, there's some there's some question marks about Greenville because they always play that non-district schedule that's hard to to calculate. Right. Um, you know, we don't know much about Terrell. I we don't expect a lot out of Terrell, but you, but you don't know. And then the North Forney school, the Forney schools are both kind of mysteries because Silver Springs hasn't played them. You know, right. Kaufman coming up from 4A, how good are they going to be? Um, so I mean, you know, it's it's just it's it's hard to to tell right now this early in the year and that's one of the things that I really didn't like about the district Silver Springs got put in I mean you've got to play whoever the UIL says but I just didn't like that there wasn't a lot of historic historical rivals for so right. for the Wildcats you know they Greenville is has been one although it's not a major rival but then the rest of these teams Silver Springs just hasn't played in years other than you know Ennis in the playoffs occasionally of course Cannon in the playoffs occasionally but that's been about it as far as, you know, Roy City a few years ago, they were in the same district. But um, just just not a lot of historical data and not a lot of rivalries for the Wildcats to really sink their teeth into. Yeah, you're exactly right. And we're going to be finding out more about that as the season goes on. If we look at some of their scores, which we'll do uh, before we break out of halftime here, we'll look at some more of their scores because several of them, well, they're all playing tonight. And, and uh, we've got some updates on some scores. But I also want to talk to you about the Rangers in Minnesota. Usually we have the Rangers on. The Rangers were ahead the last time we checked. However, there is this thing called the top of the fifth inning in which the Minnesota Twins 
Um, I was going to tell you it was tied at six and six, but Minnesota's just scored two more runs. It is eight to six Minnesota in the top of the fifth. Now you will recall that when I gave you the first score, we were about halfway through the first quarter. We were in the top of the fourth. This fifth inning, the bottom of the fourth and the top of the fifth have been a very long trying time. There have been 12 <laughs> runs in the bottom of the fourth and top of the fifth all combined. So um, uh, for the Rangers tonight, um, I know you're watching or you're listening to us because who would want to watch this <laughs> for, for the poor Rangers this evening? But uh, we, we do want to talk about these uh, Friday night scores. Uh, Colleyville has finally scored a touchdown and an extra point to lead 9-0 to zero mm. over North Forney. Forney has uh, uh, scored some points. Uh, they have 10 now. Berkner has 15, and it's halftime for those guys. Royce City and Centennial tied at halftime 6-6. Six to six. Greenville, th- this is just amazing to me. Greenville 41, WT White 6. I mean, yeah. And that, I mean, for Greenville to have scored 41 points, but like, like we said earlier, sometimes those Dallas DISD schools – um, you, you just don't know what kind of quality of a product they're putting on the field. Yeah. Kaufman leads Lindale 42-19. Now, that's, to me, that's surprising that um, I, I thought that would be a close game between those two between those two schools. The fact that Kaufman's beating them that bad, uh, you know, this Kaufman may, may be better than, than what I, at least what I thought. Yeah. Hallsville 27, Terrell 0. Terrell is in our district this yeah. year. Yeah, and, and you know, we saw Hallsville uh, for – quite a few years not probably one of their better teams so i think that really is indication that terrell's probably not going to be very strong right yeah exactly and then uh, innocent waxahachie playing tonight big rivalry there and uh waxahachie 28 ennis 11 so yeah ennis but ennis is going to be good you know that may be like marshall um that we saw the last couple of years where marshall would go one in three or oh and four in non-district and then Win the di- you know win the district title because right. they've got the athletes to do that. Right, and then uh, Corsicana playing the Centennial Spartans. It's 14 to six. Corsicana trailing in that game. So um, uh, interesting time for the teams in the district. It'll be interesting to see how these teams come out of um, the first game. Uh, the second game, of course, will also be a pre-district game. But after that, everybody hits district. And you, it's it's almost <laughs> like uh, playing in the Southeastern Conference, you know. You uh, are the Big Twelve, you know. Yeah. You, you hit, you hit the opponents right at the get go. And we're used to, you know, playing four, maybe five non-district games and kind of get your feet under you. But yeah, two non-districts and then and then you strap it on. Um, you know that it, every team's going to be the same. So right. you know it doesn't really matter. You know, uh, I, I don't know if it favors one team and maybe it favors teams that are more senior heavy than others, but every team's got a got the same you play everybody in the district once, so you've got the same schedule. Well and you know one thing, two wins will not put you into the playoffs. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's gonna take a little more than that on yeah. this year. Well the Wolverine band walking off the field now and uh, we've got about a, a couple of minutes before we start this second half of play. Butch, thank you for being with us at halftime. You've thank been you. a lifesaver. Uh, and I'm sorry again that we were unable to get the uh, sound of the Wildcat band. We will have that next weekend for you. Not our fault. Uh, uh, some problems with the equipment provided us by the local school district. And so we will uh, uh, have that sound next week for you. The band looked good uh, as they were performing, <laughs> yeah. and I'm sure they sounded good. We'll just look forward to hearing them. It is halftime, and your halftime for Wildcat football brought to you by Gay and Insurance, Silver Springs Floral, Century 21 Hometown, and Discount Wheel and Tire. We'll take a minute. We'll be back with the second half of the play. This is Memorial Stadium. It is 30 to 21 with Silver Springs leading the Wakeland Wolverines, and we are delighted that you've joined us here on KSST in Silver Springs for Wildcat football. We uh, have both teams coming out onto the field here as we are preparing to begin the uh, second half of play. It's a very nice hospitality on the part of the uh, uh, folks here in Frisco ISD. We appreciate very much. Uh, the uh, courtesy and the service that they have offered us. We are in a, a very nice large booth. This is most room we've had uh, in any place, and we're thankful for that. It's just that we're kind of enclosed and not getting any sound from the outside, uh, which is regretful, and I'll hush about that because it's beginning to sound like I'm harping about that, and I'm not meaning to do so at all. 
Wildcats have played some very nice football here, and the Lady Cats had a pretty good game also tonight as they went to Liberty Allo. And, uh, Don, you've got a little update on that, I think. Absolutely, uh, yes. Uh, the uh, Lady Cats uh, won at Liberty Allo. Uh, they used the uh, Paris formula, if, if you will. They lost the first one, and then they won everything else. They lost the first set 25-21, and then they won 25-17, 25-15, and 25-14. And uh, the coach said, uh, pulled out of that little slump and uh, had some uh, further comments, said Ellie was very athletic, took us a set to get our block of where we wanted it, and uh, once uh, we were able to make their hitters think, our defense took over. So that from uh, Coach Justin Manus as the Lady Cats now go 21-5 and five, uh, on the season. And uh, last we heard, they were ranked number 13, and that'll be good through Monday because uh, that mm-hmm. ranking uh, service uh, changes every Monday. That's the Texas Girls uh, Coaches Association. Right. Uh, that does that poll, and the Lady Cats are number 13. So uh, they win tonight as they defeated L.A. last year as well at home. But uh, they, they had to go all the way to Texarkana to win this one. And they will be at home uh, at Wills Point coming in on uh, Tuesday night. And uh, Doug and I will be uh, putting that on uh, tape uh, for a replay on Channel 18 coming up uh, uh, a day or two after that ball game's over. So, and I'm looking forward to uh, second half. Yeah. Uh, well, and let me let me throw this in too. Uh, uh, I get updates from uh, basketball, Wildcat basketball, quite often, and uh, their their shooting has been a real big thing for them this year. Fall shooting leaders uh, have been announced, and McClure has four thousand four. 125 shots. Uh, Taylor has 3,900. Johnson, 3,700. When you start shooting the ball at the goal that often, uh, certainly that's preparing you for it. Now, talking about putting the ball in the goal, we are ready to start this second half of play and the Jay Hod Chevrolet kickoff about to come up as the Wolverines send the ball to the Wildcats. Jay Hod Chevrolet located on Wildcat Way providing our vehicle for our transportation to out-of-town games this year and we are thankful <coughs> to Bill Owens and the good folks down at Jay Hodge. And uh, Tanner Cragen will be kicking off uh, to a uh, couple of Wildcats receivers. He approaches and boots the ball down the field. It's heading to uh, uh, this will be Colton Allen across the 10, across the 15 and Allen trying to get to the 20-yard line. He will not make it. He'll be tackled at about the 19, and that's where the Wildcats will start. Uh, um, and uh, certainly uh, a very impressive uh, 30 points in the first half of the Wildcats, but you cannot rest on your laurels in uh, modern-day football. Points just come too quickly, and so the Wildcats have got to have a second half to go with that good first half and I think if I heard Butch right about 250 yards of offense for the Wildcats that sound about right about 150 rushing maybe another 100 passing and now DeCorian Young back in the shotgun will take the snap he's back to pass and now will throw a screen the ball is caught by Caden Davis he's right at the 20 yard line then the defense caught up to him they kind of uh, broke through that screen it was a gain of one after the catch it'll be second down and nine for the Wildcats uh, at uh, their own 20-yard line. And the Wolverines did a good job of uh, getting in to break up that play. The Wildcat offense doing a good job, offensive line doing a good job. I'll let the record reflect that Jimmy refused the uh, free cookie that was offered uh, here in the press box (laughs) by that hospitality he was talking about. Here's a running play, and it's uh, Davis right up the middle. He has the first down for the Wildcats as he burst across the 30-yard line. Actually, they're going to They may move it back, but not enough. And uh, right at the 30, and it's first down and 10 for the Wildcats. And a short message to my wife. Yes, I did refuse that cookie, but I I will eat them when I I get home. uh, Don't worry. I I would uh, swear to that. Yeah, I don't eat cookies traveling. All right. And uh, here's first down and 10 for the Wildcats at the 30-yard line. And handoff uh, another run by Davis. He bounces it to the outside. Uh But uh, the net result is going to be a loss of a couple of yards on the play. At one time, he was uh, back about five yards from the line of scrimmage. Ended up losing two. It'll be second down and 12 from the uh, 28-yard line, and that was a first down. Yeah, I was going to say that Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down was a nice one. It's regretful that they just lost these yards from it. That's all right. Uh, That'll make the next first down even more special. 
And here's a snap uh, handoff uh, to Colton Allen, and he's uh, going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Uh, got that two yards back and maybe a foot past the 30-yard line, but uh, basically right uh, near the 30. And so it's going to be third down and 10 for the Wildcats. And, uh, you know, there's a reason that the coaches always stress the importance of the first drive of the second mm -hmm. half. It's kind of really sets the mood. Nice. And so you don't want to go three and out uh, to start the second half. That just uh, leaves a foul taste in everybody's mouth, including my own. Well, you pick up the first down. You need more than that, though. And uh, DeCorian Young uh, from the 30-yard line on third and 10 takes a snap, throws down the field, and Jace Thompson made the catch and has the first down as he got – uh, did a good job yes. of knowing where he needed to be on the field and made the catch at the 41-yard line. One yard past of the line needed. First and 10 for the Wildcats at their own 41. On that Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep, first down. The Wildcats setting themselves up to continue the march. And to Corey and Young with three receivers out to the left, one to the right. We'll take the snap. And a handoff, Colton Allen. Allen across the 45, uh, finding himself uh, hard to be seen there, uh, hiding behind big linemen and moved uh, for a, yeah, another, another first. first down uh, across the 50 out to the 48-yard uh, line, first and 10 for the Wildcats. And Allen driving hard for that, Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep, first down. All right, way to put it in gear there. Nine minutes to go, 30-21, to 21, Wildcats lead Wakeland. They're actually on the 49 of Wakeland, first down and 10 here. And uh, DeCorian Young takes a snap, throws the ball out to the right, caught Jace Thompson, and Thompson across the 45, down to the 43-yard line. Kind of reminded me of the scrimmage the other day where Jace caught uh, two or three passes in a row just real quick. Right. And uh, that's kind of happening uh, right now. Uh, got down to the 43. They need four for the first down. It'll be second down and four for the Wildcats at the Wakeland 43-yard line. A nice march underway for the Wildcat offense. Yes, indeed. Uh, DeCorey and Young doing a cool job back there. Takes the snap and will hand off uh, Colton Allen. He uh, has a first down. Oh, he took a big hit and got some claps from the uh, Wakeland team, but he already had the first down. But they really unloaded on him, and uh, Colton is uh, going to uh, check himself over to the sideline. Uh, uh, that had to shake you up to a certain degree. But it's first down and 10 for the Wildcats now at the 38-yard line in Wakeland Territory. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down and uh, heavy-duty running. And 8:17 left here in the uh, third quarter. Wildcats leading 30-21. to 21. And here's another handoff. And Davis is back in there. And he yeah. uh, bumps through there. And they won't uh, secure the tackle. So he moves all the way down to the 30. He's two yards short of the first down. It'll be second down and two on an eight-yard run by Caden Davis. And this, is, this kid's a sophomore, folks. Yeah. There are not many on the roster. He was the only one, but... Uh, after the scrimmage, Coach Owens added an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman, and the D lineman was the one that returned, uh, recovered a fumble in that first half. Another running play. Davis first down across the uh, 25 and down to the 21-yard line. First down and 10 for the Wildcats as uh, Davis continues to put on a show here. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down, and what a great first down that was with good speed. But let's talk about that offensive line, those guys really opening that space. Let's uh, correct uh, first and 10 at the 23-yard line for the Wildcats. Got a little bit better mark there. And back to uh, DeCorian Young. He throws uh, toward the end zone receiver down there, and oh, he juggled it and could not hold on. He was uh, being hampered a lot by the defender there. Again, that was Landry Tyson. We saw Landry catch one like that in the first half for a touchdown, but that one he just couldn't get the mitts on it. Second down and 10 for the Wildcats at uh, the 23-yard line. We're going to be seeing that play quite a bit as this season goes on, I have a feeling, because that's working well for the Wildcats. Well, what an athletic receiver. Of course, a guy, a track oh, guy, yeah. uh, that uh, Landry Tyson, and he can really leap, and uh, so you'll see a lot of that leaping going on. And here's a second down and 10, handoff Davis. Uh, Davis breaking to the outside and will get uh, down to about the 21-yard line. That'll be a gain of two on the play. He just could not uh, get around the corner that time with those uh, uh, Wakeland defenders uh, really persistent on that play. So second down and uh, let's uh, call it nine yards needed. Make that third down in uh, nine and the ball uh, at the 22-yard uh, line. 
Yeah, nine for a first, 22 for a touchdown. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, can't forget that incomplete pass on first down. And back to DeCorian Young. Big rush. He throws a screen, and the ball is caught. And uh, into the secondary, that's Austin Dodd. And Dodd all the way down to the five-yard line. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep. First down. I like the guy in the gold shoes. Yeah. But right now, he's uh, uh, helping himself over to the sideline and... He uh, looked like he had a little bit of hitch in the get-along, so hopefully Dodd is going to be able to shake that off. First down and goal for the Wildcats, and ball looks like it's down on about the uh, seven-yard line. And here is a, a fake, and uh, Young will keep, and Young into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. And Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says way to go, Wildcats, as DeCorian Young takes that one in. DeCorian kind of limping a little bit as he goes off, but now, now, he's, now he's getting his feet under him pretty nicely. But a great good. run and a good touchdown for the Wildcats. It is now 36-21, 6.03 left to go in the third quarter, and the Cats getting ready to kick one through for an extra point. And Brandon Zavala is out there. Again, want to pronounce his name correctly. I did it incorrectly a couple of times in the first half. I apologize for that. And here's the extra point kick, and it is good. Zavala is three for three. And the last two have looked uh, very, very nice after kind of a questionable uh, first <laughs> kick. But again, you never know what kind of hold he got. I right. mean, you just never know. 6.03 left here in the third quarter. New score now. The Wildcats with a 16-point lead. Sulphur Springs 37 and Frisco Wakeland 21. Let's take a break. Back in a moment. 6.03 to go in the third quarter. 37 for the Wildcats, 21 for Wakeland as the Wildcats send the ball down to the Wolverines in a kick. And uh, once again, Zavala will kick it. And let's see what Coach Owens decides to do here on this kickoff. They've tried a few things. Here's a kick to the left side out to around the 30. It's bobbled. It's down on the ground, and now it's picked up. And the uh, runner knocked down, and that's uh, about as good as uh, you could hope for but helped in, in great degree by the uh, Wakeland return man not being able to uh, field the ball without dropping it on the artificial turf. Let's see. Jordan. I thought the official was getting ready to signal some kind of penalty, but he was, no. he was bracing himself to catch the football. <laughs> Looks so, like George Greenway, the man who made that tackle. Very good, George. Uh, that's the way to go in there. First down and 10 now from the 31-yard uh, line for the uh, Wolverines, and they have Libel as their quarterback. We'll take the snap, and here's a running play, and uh, Wakeland running it up in there. Boy, it takes some uh, hard hits across the 35 up to about the 37-yard uh, line. That's a gain of six on the play, and uh, after that play, there are Wakeland players all over the ground, including may have been the player that ran with, ran the, with the ball that yeah. time. Greenway really got a good hit as he came in to make that tackle uh, there as well. And uh, that, that player, I uh, think, probably uh, may be trying just to get his breath. I think DQ Pitts was also around that play. Mm -hmm. I saw him. He was. In saw that play. number nine slashing around in there. Uh, you want a break for this injured player, Jimmy? Well, let's, let, let's take a brief break. We'll be right back. 5.43 left to go in the third quarter as the player is up and uh, getting some assistance over toward the sideline. He's got a pretty good brace on that uh, left leg, and that's the one that he's giving the most to. I, I think there may have been yep. kind of a, a, uh, a re-injury on that as, uh, as it happened. Michael Callahan, and he's one, uh, one of their fine players, is one that uh, the coach talked about uh, really uh, – uh, needing him to come on uh, for the Wolverines, and that's going to be a terrible sight. And of course, n you hate to see injuries in football, but it's just part of it. Yeah. And uh, he's having a, a tough time putting much weight on that left leg yeah. at just, the end of that play. Yeah, just to catch you up, 37 for the Wildcats, 21 for Wakeland, 543 left to go in the third quarter here as the Wildcats have really played some good def defense and offense tonight. Second down and four. Uh, from the 37-yard uh, line, Wakeland in their own territory, liable uh, back to take the snap. Looked like the players moved early, but no uh, flag. The pass is completed. It is a first down as uh, Liable hit uh, Reichel, and he is up to, uh, to about the 48-yard line. First down and 10, uh, uh, Wakeland in their own territory, but just barely as uh, they convert the first down at uh, the 522 mark as the clock ticks along here in the third quarter. Wildcats with that 16-point lead. 
and Libel from the shotgun has two receivers out to the right side and a running back with him in the backfield which he's now moved right by him uh, snap and he'll uh, hand off to that running back and he hits up in there but got tackled pretty quickly after only a, a one yard gain as the Wildcats defensing that play very very well be interesting to see uh, uh, how what uh, defensive coordinator or new defensive quarter coordinator Alex Guerra of what he thinks about uh, the Wildcats effort tonight and we'll find that out uh, early next week and uh, liable back in the shotgun on the second and nine. Fake to the running back. He looks down the field, th shoots a pass down there. The ball is caught. Receiver has a first down and moves out of bounds uh, close to the 40-yard line of the Wildcats. Well, I think that uh, defensively the Wildcats have uh, looked pretty good here tonight. Uh, they've had a, a couple of times that uh, things have gone awry, but uh, for the most part they've really been hustling after the ball. Sam Chatham was the receiver that made the catch for uh, the Wolverines. And they're going to mark it at the 41-yard line. So first down and 10-41 in Wildcats territory. And Libel is uh, back in the shotgun against the Wildcats. Uh, goes back to pass. He's scanning the field. Now shoots the pass. It is caught on a screen. And the receiver moving all the way close to the first down uh, marker down around the 30-yard uh, line. And just depends on the mark, I guess, It'll right be, down. It, oh, yeah, first it. down, uh, they, they did uh, signal to move the chains. It was right at the end of uh, where the sticks were. And first down and 10 uh, for the Wolverines now at the 31-yard line in Wildcats territory. Wildcats trying to, to uh, resist here and uh, uh, make it tough on them. Once again, Liable takes the snap, looks to the right, fires a pass out there, it's caught, and oh, just a uh, defense came in and uh, hit that receiver right around uh, low and uh, made a very Good secure job. tackle, no gain on the play. Second down and uh, 10 from the 31-yard uh, line. And Wildcat defense really responding well to that. I'm not sure exactly who that was. I think Andy Eddins is the corner over there, but that might have been even a safety man coming up have to watch Doug's video to check that out. Second down and 10 now from the 31-yard uh, line. Liable takes a snap, and uh, he will hand off. The running back uh, got all, almost all of it from that last little lean there after the, the play was pretty much jammed up, but he was able to uh, stretch out to the 29-yard line, so it's going to be third down and eight from the 29-yard line. So the Wildcats trying to put the brakes on right here. And uh, Michael Arrington, five, turn over the ball. Yeah, Michael Arrington, 5'10", 220-pound senior, did a good job on that tackle. <clears throat> and uh, once again, uh, Liable he is up there in the shotgun. We'll take the snap, and now he's rolling to the left, looking down the field, and now lobs a pass. He finds an open receiver first down, all the way down around the 10-yard line after the catch. As that time, he hit Jared uh, Sheehan, who made the catch and uh, got open in that Wildcats secondary. That looks like he may be a tight end guy or something uh, for these uh, Wolverines. Uh, yeah, Sheehan is actually listed on the depth chart number three on the tight ends, but uh, looked pretty good getting open that time. Ball. First down and 10 now around, well, actually first and goal inside the 10. Uh, 2.39 left here in the third quarter. Fake to the running back. Rolling to the right. Libel shoots a pass. Intercepted by the Wildcats. Oh, what a great interception by the Wildcats down there. Uh, very deep uh, in their own territory. And uh, let's see who's running off of that football. Number Is that seven. Jace Thompson? Yeah. Is Number that seven. just the single? Yeah, that's Jace. And of course, uh, so many of these Wildcats, we talked about him catching passes. He just made a brilliant uh, interception. Of course, I must say it was thrown in his general direction oh, pretty yes, much. Yes, and but you got to catch it. Yes. The the regretful thing is he's at about the one yard one yard line. line in front of his own end zone, so you don't want to make a mistake here. Yeah, that's for sure. You got to. What was uh, key number one? Uh, protect that football. There you go. Coach Owen said. Two thirty-one to go in the third quarter. And the Wildcats up thirty-seven twenty-one, and to Corey and Young. Uh, from the one-yard line, and now let's see. We're going to have time. a 
timeout taken by the Wildcats. They want to talk it over from their own one. 231 left here in the third quarter. Wildcats 37 and Wolverines 21. Let's take a break here and we'll be back in a moment. 231 to go in the third quarter. 37 for the Wildcats, 21 for Wakeland. We were talking about how short some of the games were last year. This one won't be one of those. And uh, here we go now with uh, Wildcats from uh, the shadow of their own uh, goal line here. We'll take the snap and uh, fake to the running back. Uh, Young fires the ball down the field. A receiver yeah. makes the catch across the 10, across the 15. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Completed ball to Austin Dodd. We mentioned he had limped off while ago. He still does not look like he's ready to run the 100-yard dash, but but he's able to get open and make a catch. May we mention Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down for the Wildcats. All right. I, got, love, the, I love the way that sounds. Got out of that hole. That's the good news. All the way up to the 17, first down and 10. Dodd in motion uh, over to the left side. Snap back to DeCorian Young. Hand off to uh, Colton Allen, and Allen will move it up to around the 20-yard line. That's a gain of three on the play. And that'll be second down and seven from the 20-yard line. Second and seven, and the Wildcats on their own end of the field here at the 20. I was watching uh, Cameron Coffert to uh, run off the field. He's one of the B backs for Coach Ch uh, Casey Jeter. And back to DeCorian Young. Handoff running back hitting up in there. Allen again. And the surge of, of that good offensive line moves it up around the 25-yard uh, line. Boy, I, I, I can't uh, uh, think anything but the offensive line is just really going to get a good grade for this one, especially if they can keep this up here. All the way up to the 25-yard line, it's going to be third down and three for the Wildcats. So you really want to hang on to that ball with a 16-point lead and really just uh, uh, take that time off the scoreboard. So big play here, third down and three from the 25-yard line. DeCorian Young from the shotgun. Waiting for the snap, now takes it and will hand off Colton Allen. And uh, he moves uh, toward the first down. I think it's uh, going to be a little short. And uh, I think maybe uh, a yard no, or so. No, no, first he, down. First so, down. My goodness, I, I thought I had a pretty good angle to check it out, but obviously I'm not looking right down that line. And and uh, so uh, good so, job by Colton Allen to pick that up. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down for the Wildcats. And first down at their own 27. Remember this drive started uh, way back there at the one yard line. To Corey and Young, the quarterback. Uh, a long snap on this one, and now nope. uh, we uh, have a flag f that flew, I believe, from that. Yep. Uh, yes, that official. The illegal procedure. Way down the line there. I don't know if he's the head linesman, but uh, there are two of those linemen. Coach linesmen. Owen. Coach Owen's not real pleased with the call, but the man very adamant about what he decided. That's a uh, first down in 15, and... Uh, that's, uh, yeah, they're going to let out. the quarter run out, yeah. and that's the end of the third quarter. We've played three here from Frisco Memorial Stadium, and our score after three periods of play, the Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 37 and uh, Frisco Wakeland 21. Let's get those four fingers up in the air. I see they're doing that, and uh, we'll return with the start of the fourth quarter right after this. We're ready to begin the fourth quarter with 37 for the Wildcats, 21 for Wakeland. A final score in in uh, some of the teams making up our district. North Forney has lost to Colleyville Heritage, 16 to zero. They started at seven o'clock this evening, so that uh, score coming in already. Uh, Waxhatchee leading Ennis, 35-25. Uh, some real uh, interesting scores as we go through here. Kaufman, 49. Uh, Lindell, 19. Uh, Greenville, 41. W.T. White, six. Um, and um, Berkner and Forney. Forney scored 10 now, 15 to 10. Hmm. We'll get you some local games as well here in just a moment. All right. Kind of don't know how, what to, quite to make of that North Forney. They were supposed to be really, really good this year, but I don't know what Colleyville Heritage or what kind of season they're expected to have, but it could be they just played up in class this week. And But here come the Wildcats now, first down in uh, 15 with the ball on the 22-yard uh, line. And DeCorian Young back in the shotgun. 
waiting for the snap. And again, it's a long uh, snap, taking a lot of time there. They get that clock down to about five seconds on the clock, and here's a handoff. Uh, Davis uh, sweeping the right, and a flag flies. And you know, Jimmy, we have not seen a lot of that uh, in the area of what we would call holding. Yeah, we just did, I think. Yeah, that uh, I think it's the first. <laughs> I think it's the first one we've seen from either team. Yes, it is. Holding against the cats. But you know what? It still uh, doesn't feel any better, no. even to say that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Some of the area scores, Reigns and Maybank tied at 7 each in the fourth quarter. Mount Vernon, 40. Bonham, 14. That's in the third quarter. Mount Vernon? Yeah. And Winsboro, 34. Anna, 7. Now, the Mount Vernon, a famous mascot somewhere? Did I dream that? or? Uh, they had a quarterback called Don Meredith. Oh, I know that. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> then, then you have Farmersville and Cooper. Cooper leads Farmersville 30. Uh, no, excuse me. It's uh, Farmersville 37, Cooper 34. My apologies. Come on, Picton Trails, Grand Saline. Here we go. Ready to play. All right. And uh, first in a bunch. First down and 25 needed from the 12-yard line. More the Wildcats convert this. And Coach Young will uh, want to head to Vegas. Tries luck out there. Here's a snap and uh, hand. Oh, fake and throw down the field. Oh, uh -oh. another tipped interception and, yep. for uh, the Wolverines inside the 20 and heading toward the end zone, all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. And uh, that is the second time that uh, DeCorian Young has been intercepted on a ball that was tipped and uh, sent high into the air. And uh, the Wolverines intercept and make a 12 yard. Well, I don't know. It was more yards than no, that. That 30. was the line of scrimmage. But yeah. anyway, it goes all the way back for a pick six. Garrett Field, a man for the Wolverines who caught that one and took it in. Well, Hayden Field's having a day. He's yeah. uh, caught the 91-yard touchdown uh, play, mm -hmm. and then he intercepts a pass and ends up in the end zone. Right. But he may be, uh, hopefully, he'll be the only one celebrating this one. The Wildcats still have a 10-point lead. And let's see, uh, they look very much like they're going to try for two here. And uh, so here's uh, Wakeland on the two-point conversion. Quarterback rolling to the right and looking. Uh, now we'll throw and lob into the end zone. And there's a he got he, it. Oh, he caught that ball right. Did he get yep. a touch? Well, two points. And I think a different quarterback uh, was in there on that play. I do not believe that's the quarterback we've seen. I think uh, that was Jake Knight was the one that uh, did that uh, catch or that toss and uh, a beautiful catch as that receiver went up right in the corner under heavy coverage. And now we've got an eight-point ball game, but it's tightened up now. 11-21 left in the fourth quarter. Wildcats 37 and Frisco Wakeland 29. Let's take a break here, and we'll be back in a moment. And 11 minutes, 21 seconds here in the fourth quarter. And Wakeland getting ready to uh, send the ball down to the Cats on this kick. And it looks like we once again have Colton Allen and also Aiden Walker are back deep. Uh, they're standing around the 15-yard line. And again, they, for kickoffs, they use uh, Tanner uh, Cragen and use a different kicker for when they try to actually kick an extra point but instead they went for two that time but now Cragen uh, kicking the ball probably has the stronger leg but maybe not quite as accurate that be usually why you do this there's a kick it's coming up a little short though and it's uh, taken uh, oh they did a fair catch inside the 25 and by the new rule this year when you do that you get a first and 10 on your own 25 the officials will move that ball all the way out to the 25 so that's the first time that we've seen that i believe right uh, uh the new rule happening in that one right and i haven't seen anybody sent off the field because they didn't have any knee pads but uh, as much as the Wildcats have emphasized that and told their team members, look, if you go out there with no knee pads, you're going to cost your team. I can't imagine somebody doing that. It's going to cost your knee, too, if you get hit right. And uh, here's a first running play. The Wildcats running back uh, coming through a hole across the 30 to the 35. And, again, that was Caden Davis. And Davis uh, is right at the mark needed for a first down. And the official will say, move those chains, guys. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Well, he hadn't yet. Well, he sure did. Oh, no, I see. Well, then, then, uh, then they mark it. Uh, I guess he, he got Foot. a bad mark. Yeah, yard Second short. down and short now, uh, needing about a yard. 
And here's uh, Young uh, passing uh, out in the flat to Davis, and he's hmm. hit for a loss. No, that was, excuse me, that was uh, Dodd again. And Dodd on the catch, and uh, he is uh, dropped uh, back at uh, 29, so they still need about a yard. So it's third down and one. Well, they did so well on that first play, they just need to go ahead and get this uh, yeah. play here. Oh, I can't imagine that if uh, DeCorian didn't take off that he couldn't couldn't get this one yard unless somebody made a beautiful defensive play. There's a snap to Young, and he'll let the running back Davis run it, and he gets the first down as he spurts forward and <clears throat> goes across uh, up to about the 37-yard uh, line. Now, they say, move those chains. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down for the Wildcats on a nice little run, and the Wildcats um, eating some time off the clock with these running plays. Yeah, 10:02 still left here in the fourth quarter. The Wildcats up by eight at 37-29. Of course, you'd like to eat clock, and then you would like to get it in the end zone. It would be the best of both worlds. And to Corey and Young from the shotgun. We'll now move uh, Jermon Bryant Amos to the other side. This be back and handoff to a running back, uh, storming up the middle. Another uh, good run for the Wildcats as uh, that uh, play went across the 45-yard uh, line. That was, and that uh, was Colton, Colton Allen, Allen mm -hmm. the double deuce. I believe Emmett Smith wore that number, if I recall correctly. And uh, they are two yards. No, he did not play in Sulphur Springs. <laughs> Second down and two from uh, the 46-yard uh, line. And once again, DeCorey and Young will take the snap and uh, hand off uh, Colton wow. Allen again, and he hits up in there. He's uh, very close uh, to the uh, mark needed, but I think a yard short. I, I, so third down. You think you got it? No, I, I, I think he's going to be – they may have to measure this one. But I will say this, that offensive line doing a great job. Here we go. We're going to measure it. Oh, it looks like he marked it on the oh, other side. Oh, he gave it to him. He gave oh, it to wow. him. Oh, wow. Because it looks like they marked it on the other side of the line. It looked like yeah. that marker was on one side and the ball was on the other. But Yeah, Silver Springs, Dodge Chrysler, Jeep, first down. First and 10. The Wildcats at their own 48. And Jimmy made the point. This is a time-grinding drive mm -hmm. as the Wildcats have gotten that clock down to 844 with that 37-29 lead. And they just need to keep it up. But they have a fresh set of downs here. For DeCorey and Young, he takes a snap and a running play one more time and Colton Allen, and he'll be hit uh, right at the 49-yard line. That's a gain of one. It'll be second down and nine. The Wildcats at their own 49-yard line. Big offensive linemen usually like the running play. They like to really uh, burrow in there and, and uh, make things happen. Now, as many as 10 of those guys were supposed to play tonight as uh, Coach Offit likes his line group and uh, uh, says all those guys should be playing. And they've done an excellent job. Hats off to Coach Offit for a good job of coaching those guys up. Second down and nine, back to uh, a Young, and he will fake. And now Keep is being chased. He breaks the tackle across the 50, across the 45. He runs for the first down. I believe he no, got outside out first. Uh, Jimmy said he ran out of bounds too soon, and he did all the way back to the 45-yard line. That's uh, going to be three yards short of the first down, and so, uh, but a very, very good run there. It'll be third mm -hmm. down and three. He got himself out of a lot of trouble with that run. He was uh, really being hounded, but uh, did a good job of getting it in. We're going back for some reason. There must have been a penalty flag. They moved it back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, I never did see the flag on there. this. Yeah, I didn't there's, a, there's not a flag on the And field. this is a big Let's mark off. Here. Oh, my goodness. Must have been a flag on this side of the field because we didn't see a flag anywhere. This, uh, I don't know we're going to get any explanation whatsoever. We're not hearing any audio. Not only the band, uh, but not from the officials or or anything else. We're in the tomb tonight, and uh, that, that's the modern uh, football stadium. So that's, that's where they're headed, and they give you jinky little... 25-cent uh, speakers and stuff to try to uh, help you out, but that doesn't work. Here's a screen pass for the Wildcats on this uh, long play, and it's caught. And uh, here's uh, Dugan. Uh, Dugan on the on the screen pass, and he's across the 50. So a very nice gain. Uh, and it'll be third down, and the Wildcats will still need, looks like about uh, seven, seven yards, as the ball is on the 49-yard line. Third down and seven. The Wildcats have gotten the clock down to 720. 
but this is a big, big play here for the Wildcats to keep this drive going and just to try to choke the time out of that clock there. Trip receivers out to the left, single receiver to the right. Quarterback by himself. Yes, he is. The old naked backfield there and snap back to DeCorey and he has time to throw. Now scrambles out of the pocket, looking down the field for somebody to get open. Throws Flag. the ball incomplete. Came up, uh, boy, there were flags, and that's in a bad spot. Yep. Tried to get it uh, down the field to a receiver, but came up short. He tried to There's hit Austin Dodd. There's your holding again. And that one will probably be, yes, they'll probably just forget that one. Yep. Because uh, it's going to be fourth down and, and eight. Yep. They declined it. So there you go. So that uh, will set up the uh, punt situation. And here comes the punting unit. And Austin Dodd hobbling off the field again a little bit. Yeah, he has uh, been a courageous young man because he has had to play uh, a lot of this football game in the second half with uh, with some hobbles, and uh, yeah, he that. just continues to trot out there. He is such a valuable player on both sides of the football. And here's uh, Jermon Bryant Amos, and I wonder if he's got a fake in him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's tried that. Here's a high snap, oh, and another, another flag flies. Man, we have just, this has turned into a flag fest here. Yeah, it's going to be against the Wildcats as well, it looks like. Illegal procedure. Illegal procedure of some sort. And that'll cost them five. Well, uh, German, this just gives you five more yards to, to get off a mighty kick here. He has a very strong leg. He punishes that football if you go to practice and watch him punt. Uh, he really pops that football when he hammers it down the field. 6.49 to go here in the game. 34, uh, th excuse me, 37.29 the score. Wildcats lead. Here's a snap back to the punter, and he uh, rugby Whoa. styles, and oh, hit a monster punt. And it's going to hit and uh, die, nice and oh, it uh, got backspin. It backspinned uh, about 10 yards up to the 15-yard line. Still a good punt, though. Oh, it uh, was an excellent punt. Uh, even with that 10-yard uh, uh, deficit there at the, the very end. But uh, that, was a, that was a nice 40 one. 40-yard punt. punt. Great punt. Yeah, like you say, uh, it could have been a, could have been a 50. If a, if a, or it could have rolled into the end zone, it would have been 55. But, but that <laughs> would even have been a, net, a worse result. He yeah. did get it inside the 20, and it's down exactly. to the 14-yard line. So first down and 10 for the Wolverines. 6.37 left uh, in the fourth quarter, and the Wildcats leading. 37-29, and now their defense has to go to work here and, and stifle uh, these Wolverines, and I'm convinced they have changed quarterbacks. Here's a throw down the field, a flags fly, the ball's caught, and Field is on the move again, and he could go all the way and he score. Will. Nobody's going to catch him and unless those flags save us. That flag is going to be <coughs> against the Wildcats, I think. May not be, though. He's holding his ground here. Holding. Against the Cats, decline. And, it's a uh, touchdown. It is a touchdown, the official all the way down the field. And my goodness, what a game for field. And right when we were hoping that the Wildcats could hold, that uh, looks like in the <laughs> and vicinity <they> <laughs> of an 86-yard uh, uh, touchdown pass. And that's two extremely long touchdown passes to the same guy. And the bad Garrett news, Field. And the bad news is the Wildcats did hold on that. They may have called it uh, what they did, but it was, it was basically pass interference uh, in that situation. And now they try for two, which could tie the game up with 624 left on the clock here. And there is indeed, uh, this is Jake Knight, the quarterback, is uh, uh, generally liable, just uh, had, a, had a tough night tonight. And Knight will take the snap. He tries to tie it up here. He rolls to the right under pressure, throws the ball into the end zone, and it was broken, blo broken up. Real nice defense there. I think that was DQ Pitts. Yes, it was. DQ mm -hmm. runs off the field, and he made an excellent defensive play right there to uh, keep the Wildcats up by two. 624 left here in the fourth quarter. Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 37 and Frisco Wakeland 35. Take a break and back in a moment. And 6.24 left to go here, and we were talking about that last play. Bryce McQueen also was getting to the quarterback, got some hands on him just as he was releasing the ball. Great play by McQueen to help out and keeping that two points off the board. 
Very good point, Jimmy, because if had that quarterback had more time, yeah. he would have probably thrown a better pass, and uh, it might have uh, gotten there before DQ could have done his thing there. But uh, a good combination of McQueen and uh, Pitts uh, keeping uh, Wakeland two points down. And let's see if they kick it deep or whether they uh, try something fancy here. As once again, uh, Tanner Cragen is the kicker. And he approaches, and he will put the foot into it. It's another short kick. Wildcats take it right at the 20, and uh, he he was a kick. Uh, that was uh, Aiden Walker who yeah. made the catch, and he made it down on the knees. And uh, I don't know if he actually made a fair catch, but they are moving the ball. Looks like out to the 25-yard yep, line. They so they treated it like a fair catch. I I didn't. I didn't, I didn't see him call it. No, he yeah, did. Okay, Butch said he did. Butch, okay. Butch saw it. So I, Butch, I, Butch I has it. those football eyes, you know. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Wildcats at their own 25-yard line. 6-24 is the time they're trying to kill off the clock here. And uh, DeCorian Young uh, is the quarterback for the Wildcats. And uh, snap back to Young, and he hands off to Colton Allen, sweeping to the right side, and uh -huh. he ran into a... A brick wall of uh, angry wolverines. All kinds of mixed metaphors there, but all uh, to the 24-yard uh, line. Loss of one on the play. It'll be second down and 11 for the Wildcats. Always, when I think about DeCorian Young, I remember how poised he was for the JV team when they went to Florida. Mm -hmm. And they uh, put a, a victory up. Uh, on a game uh, that was played in Florida and how well he played. He just uh, played with a lot of poise. And he's back there, Jimmy pointed out last time, in an empty backfield, takes a snap. He's got plenty of time, now throws a pass, and it's caught by uh, Davis who breaks a tackle, breaks another one across the 30, and Davis uh, moves uh, close to the first down. He's going to be a yard or two short, but that was a great individual effort there by a, a promising a young sophomore right. who's really going to be a thrill for these Wildcats. They're three yards short of the first down. It'll be third third down and three for the Wildcats at the 32-yard line. Davis just doesn't give up. You get him the ball, he's going to keep pressing till they bring him down. He's going to find a way. And you know what? Coach Owen says he practices that way. He he uh, doesn't leave anything on the practice field, and that's, you know, a coach loves you, that kind of player. Uh, you, you have to practice that way. DeCorian Young is uh, trying to make sure everybody's set in the right position. Now the Wildcats are going to have to take a timeout to keep the clock off their back here. So timeout is taken. 4.57 left here in the fourth quarter. The Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 37, Frisco Wakeland 35. Let's take a break here and be back in a moment. And uh, the Wildcats now on this big third down play, and they'll uh, fake, and uh, DeCorian Young rolling to the right. He's going to keep, has the first down across 35 to the 40, and out of bounds at the 44-yard line. So DeCorian Young doing what he does so well when he takes off and runs with that football. He is a huge weapon. They're going to mark it back at the 43, but that's still first down and 10 for the Wildcats. They still uh, have four minutes and uh, 48 seconds uh, to try to get off that clock, and uh, they lead only by a narrow uh, two points. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down, and hopefully they'll pick up a couple more here pretty quick. Yeah, I'd like to order that up. The Wildcats in their own territory back at the 43. They send Landry Tyson in uh, motion to the right, and here's a snap, a handoff to the running back again, breaking uh, through there, uh, Davis, and uh, he will move uh, to about the 47-yard line. And a nice run again by Caden Davis, C-A-D-E-N, and then Davis. Uh, and that's uh, up to the 47-yard line. That's a gain of four. It'll be second down and six for the Wildcats as that clock continues to roll down to 420. As Matt Young, ground, uh, ground Matt. Remember Kansas City had a coach named Chuck, and it was Ground Chuck. Which, but ground Mac works. Matt works. Here's a snap back to DeCorian Young again to Davis, and uh, Davis uh, across the uh, 45, and uh, it's going to be right about where he was. So no gain on the play. So big uh, third down and six now for the Wildcats. As the clock is under four minutes, it's at 3:45. But we've seen Wakeland uh, with my goodness, especially when they throw a pass toward field. He can score in uh, less than uh, 
10 or 15 seconds, seems like, from one end of the field to the other. So the Wildcats need a big first down here. DeCorian Young will take the snap. He uh, fakes to the running back, looking, looking. Now scrambles out of the pocket, looking down the field, and now throws a pass down the field. Right. It is caught, and out of bounds it goes. That looked like big uh, German uh, Bryant Amos on the catch. The B-back makes the catch uh, for a first down. What a nice play there by German Bryant Amos. And you say, hey, he's the punter. Yeah, but he's also a real good uh, B-back, and he's a basketball player. He's a... Uh, a tall fellow at probably a 6'3", 6'4", or something like that. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down for the Wildcats. They moved into Wakeland territory. They're down at the 43-yard line. Still three minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. It stopped right now as DeCorey and Young back in the shotgun will take the snap, and he hands off. This is Colton Allen, and Allen will power uh, for forward for two yards. Uh, on the play to the 41-yard line. It's kind of split between the 40 and the 41. I guess I'll mark that at the 40 and uh, call it uh, second down and seven. So give, I think they usually advance to the yard marker ahead. Talk to Butch. He's uh, he's the man with the pencil over there if he's not using his computer tonight. Here's second down and seven for the Wildcats. Uh, DeCorey and Young back in the shotgun. Uh, letting that play clock work on down inside 10 seconds. There's a snap to Young, and he hands off again Colton Allen, and Allen, uh, meeting some heavy resistance, moves across the 40, uh, down to around uh, to the 39, and timeout taken as Frisco Wakeland will burn a timeout here as uh, the Wildcats face uh, a second down, and uh, they're going to need uh, about seven yards or six yards. And 2.29 left uh, here in the fourth quarter. Wildcats leading 37, Wakeland 35. Back in a moment. 2.29 left to go in the fourth quarter in the ball game. 37 for the Wildcats, 35 for Wakeland as the Wildcats come out. They control the ball here on about the 39-yard line, moving toward the goal. And uh, Wakeland still has two of their timeouts left uh, with 2.29 left on that clock here in the fourth quarter, as Jimmy mentioned. And uh, DeCorian Young uh, back, uh, takes the snap and fakes and will keep it right up the middle. DeCorian runs for a first down. Oh, my, what a play by DeCorian Young as uh, he picks up that first down. And we saw that play a lot last year where they would fake to the uh, back uh, coming around and then the quarterback would shoot right up the middle with a football. And uh, DeCorian ran that one for a first down, Jimmy. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep, first down for the Wildcats. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, player of the game. And uh, Young's trying out for the spot, I think. He's, well, he's he would, doing uh, a good job. He would be a good uh, good uh, choice. And there have been a lot of good yeah, choices. I've liked several. Davis tonight. Austin Dodds left it out all over the field here. A lot of, lot of heroes. And uh, here's a handoff right up the middle. It's a Davis, and Davis uh, started to take it outside and then got tackled, but um, has quite a good gain on the play as he picks up five yards. And you can just tell Wakeland is deciding when do we stop the clock. There's 134 and counting right now. They still got two timeouts, but the Wildcats are, are uh, yeah. you know, they can only do that twice, and the Wildcats might get another first down. They've got yeah. second and five right here. I would just remind everyone that on uh, KSSTRadio.com, we will be naming a player of the game. All right. And uh, DeCorian uh, back in the shotgun again. They're letting that clock go all, all the way down to three and now two seconds. But here's a handoff again. The running back hitting right up the middle. And uh, Davis, uh, once again, been a real workhorse. Uh, if, and now another timeout taken by Frisco uh, Frisco Wakeland with one minute left exactly in the ball game as the Wildcats face third down and one here. On the 22-yard uh, on the 22 yard line? Yes, at the 22-yard uh, line. The Wildcats 37, Frisco Wakeland 35. Let's take another break. Back in a moment. We have one minute left to go here in the fourth quarter. One minute left to go in the game. 37 for the Wildcats, 25 for Wake, uh, 35 for Wakeland, I'm sorry. Wildcats do control the ball on the 24-yard line. We said 22 a moment it, ago. It's moved it back one, and it's uh, third down, and now two. They haven't corrected the scoreboard, but that's the reality of it as they've got a better mark from the official. So now a big... Uh, 
third down and two play for the Wildcats with this final minute left to go. Wakeland has one timeout left. They'll hand off the running back. Allen hits in there. He's burrowing. Did he burrow enough? It looked like he might have. No, they're not giving it to him. And uh, they're uh, they're looking at it here, and uh, they move it. They mark it right on that line. Yeah, it's a yard short. So this is fourth and one, and it makes you wonder, if you're a cynical sort, why did they move that ball back a yard? And they've got time timeout for Wakeland, I That's think. That's their last timeout at 54 seconds, so I think we'll see a, a fourth down play here, and we'll see how the Wildcats play it. A 54 seconds all that's left here. Wildcats 37, a Frisco Wakeland 35. We'll take a break. Back in a moment. Big fourth down play for the Wildcats. Fourth down and one here from the 23-yard line. Corey and Young back in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Hand off Davis. First down for the Wildcats. He's across the 20, across the 15, and down to the 14-yard line. And I don't mind telling you, I think I've seen my player of the game, but I'm not even sure I can vote on this deal. But uh, <laughs> that's, uh, I'll just leave that editorial comment out there. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. No timeouts left for Frisco Wakeland, and the clock is under 40 seconds. Uh, they will have to run this play because uh, they've got 21. There's 12 seconds difference, and now we come to the knee play. My favorite play. And Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down got them to this point. There you go. I knew it would. Ball coming. They're still counting down here. And uh, snap, and DeCorian takes the knee. And uh, as a uh, senior... DeCorian Young takes his first knee and gets his first victory as a senior quarterback. And uh, 32 other seniors can also say that they uh, got a win tonight. Right. Uh, and uh, also some sophomores, three of them, and then the rest of them are juniors on that 53-man roster. And right now the Wildcats are living the good life. They're, they're loving a 37-35 to win over Frisco Wakeland. And, uh, Jimmy, I think you said it earlier, who would have thought it? Yeah. Um, and uh, the Wildcats kind of just kind of made it through that second half after a huge 30-point uh, first half, but they had what it takes to make the plays to hold on uh, for dear life on this one and start 1-0 and for the season as we look forward to our rematch next Friday, the uh, season opener in Gerald Prim Stadium against uh, Lovejoy, the team that ended our season last year. And the Balkum Insurance defensive play of the game, I'm going to call that as the two-point try that uh, ended. Butch is agreeing with me on that one. The two-point try where both uh, Wildcats uh, on the receiving end of that and on the quarterback end of that stopped that play and kept that two points off the board, which would have created quite a mess here as we went into the latter part of uh, Bryce this McQueen on the good rush. Right. And DQ Pitts on the good defense in the end zone to uh, knock that ball to the ground, both of those guys. And, uh, you know, it's a team game, and uh, they're just two of the real heroes here tonight. There right. seem to be so many. Uh, we talked about Caden Davis. We talked about DeCorian Young. We talked about Austin Dodd leaving it all out on the field. And all of those big, anonymous offensive linemen. Right. I can still hear Jeremy Offit <laughs> as we were talking to him after practice uh, this year. And he talked about, you know, these guys, they are so close to each other because they don't play for any individual glory. They don't get their name called for for uh, Jacob Janitas uh, gained seven yards on that play. Right. But he's in there fighting some guy so that somebody else make can make sure seven, he got yards. seven yards. Yeah. So those big uh, offensive linemen, a huge part of this win. And I think Butch pointed that out at halftime, too. Uh, uh, you know, that uh, there are a lot of heroes here tonight, some defensive heroes, too. Uh, some great plays made, uh, some turnovers and stuff. And so uh, all uh, adds up to Wildcats 37 and Frisco Wakeland 35. And I think there'll be some people that will read this score and go, wow, Sulphur Springs puts it on uh, Frisco Wakeland, a big uh, uh, a Division I uh, Class 5A school. They're, they're big population, just like Texas High uh, is and, and those schools. And so just a, a big win all the way around. Congratulations to all concerned. And I look forward to talking with Coach Owens about it at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And they, he will be on the Coach's Show at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, simulcast on KSST Radio and Channel 18 Television. Silver Springs and Greenville uh, look like, to, at this point in time, they will be the only two who bring home a win in this district. Now, mm. the Forney's pretty close to Berkner at this point in time, and Ennis is uh, 
close the gap a little bit uh, against Waxahachie. But uh, for uh, as it stands at this moment in time, a win for the Wildcats. Don't forget, KSSTRadio.com will have the story of the game, statistics of the game, and we'll also be naming a player of the game uh, during this uh, weekend. We we'll want you to uh, go to KSSTRadio.com to catch up on that. We'll have the story about the game on uh, KSST News tomorrow throughout the day. It will be our uh, update along with the Lady Cat win tonight. Our right. Congratulations to those Lady Cats. And uh, so stay with us as we follow the Cats all season long. It's going to be a grand season this year. Uh, and you can follow the Wildcats and Lady Cats here on KSST Radio, KSSTRadio.com, and Channel 18 television suddenly cable now the the good news is last year we did about 60 games we think we'll be doing about 60 games again this year for all of the various and sundry sports so stay with us and follow us with all of that for don julian who's done play-by-play -play, for doug haston who's videotaped this game for replay on suddenly cable channel 18 and butch Burney, who has been uh taking um, notes for us and getting the statistics together he'll be writing the story for us for kansas 2 radio.com james terry thank you for the great job that you've done back at home and keeping us on tonight and for all of our crew who put all of this together to bring us to a night when we've had a very successful evening i'm jim rogers general manager of kssd and uh, a part of this broadcast crew, we're glad you've been with us. Have a great evening.